Austin, Texas has always thrown a great party. But finally, it is festive at the Longhorns' home football games. New energy, high expectations, and a quarterback playing at a Heisman Trophy level. But swaggering in of the Oklahoma State Cowboys, this is a stadium they've owned for a decade, and Mike Gundy's crews won the last four in the series. Texas determined to end that streak and start the Big 12 campaign on a positive note tonight. Texas Pride, a rowdy bunch of cowboys. It doesn't need a name to be a rivalry. This one has become as intense as they get. Texas loses another heartbreaker. The Pokes have won the last five in Austin and are loaded again this year with the nation's leading rusher. And leading receiver. For the kid born to play QB in Texas, enough is enough. We know damn well what's coming in here next week. There's only so much poking, prodding, and losing the long ones can take. Like a new tale from the old west, the Cowboys cross the state line to try and mess with Texas. On Saturday Night Football. Howdy from Austin, where the feels like temperatures are in triple digits tonight. Welcome to Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo. And tonight's Big 12 opener between the Oklahoma State Cowboys and the Texas Longhorns. It's become an underrated rivalry because the Pokes have dominated in recent years. And welcome, Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet. Remember me? Yeah. Good, good, good to, to be back you. with you. Good to see you. We had this game last year in Stillwater. It was wild. This year, Texas has come up short in one hyped home game to LSU. They preach wanting to be elite. You can't be elite if you can't beat the Cowboys tonight. And this is huge for both teams. It's not just for Texas trying to avenge some of those losses. Oklahoma State, a team nobody really talked about in July and August, all of a sudden has some newfound confidence. So it's going to be a fun game to watch. It is. Meanwhile, week four talking points begin with a Badger beatdown in Camp Randall of Michigan. Jonathan Taylor, Heisman candidate, got loose early, and the Badgers were relentless on both sides of the ball. Michigan crumbled quickly. Well, it was a, really a day that we're going to find out about both teams. Michigan and their offense, how much have they improved? It wasn't just a failure on that side of the ball. Don Brown and the Wolverine defense, also a miserable day. Michigan, a demoralizing loss. The Badgers are sky high right now in the Big Ten West. They looked awesome. Meanwhile, an impressive victory for Auburn on the road against Jimbo Fisher and College Station. Anthony Schwartz, one of the fastest men in the world when it comes to football got loose and a reverse and Auburn was impressive offensively and defensively in the SEC West if you want to play with the big boys you got to go on the road in tough environments and find ways to win games give Auburn and Gus Malzahn a lot of credit that was a huge uh, performance today now meanwhile can Texas get another huge performance from Sam Ellinger who's been playing at a highest level throwing the ball just beautifully yeah he's just in command of the offense a third year of running this system uh, you know you watch quarterbacks whether it's on Sunday in the NFL or in college they, they just look like they know where to go with the ball before the ball is snapped that that's how Sam is executed up to this point in the LSU game fight he fought valiantly against uh, Joe uh, against uh, Joe Burrow in that game just to come up a little bit short so his leadership will have to be on display tonight because I think Oklahoma State could score with him they got weapons but the big 6-6 receiver Colin Johnson is still out hamstring re-aggravated this week he's gonna miss one more game Oklahoma State has the nation's leading rusher in Chuba Hubbard and top receiver in Tylen Wallace we'll talk about those guys in a minute Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And welcome back to Texas. Bevo 15 will be standing guard in what is a construction zone. And the Longhorn fans want to see if they can reestablish home field dominance over this Oklahoma State team. 
Spencer Sanders, a dynamic young quarterback for Oklahoma State, but it's really about the running back wide receiver combo, which they always seem to have a good one. Oh, yeah, Mike Gunning, his 15th year, you go back over the years, you're right. That combination makes this offense very tough to defend. Starts with Chuba Hubbard. They're going to try to stretch Texas defense tonight and allow him to use his vision to have those cutback lanes where he has outstanding patience and then the acceleration, not to get tw 10 or 20. He's looking to go 70, 80, 90 with the speed that he has. So that's the running game. And then you have Tyler Wallace, who leads the nation in receiving, and he's usually known for downfield acrobatic catches. This year, with a new quarterback, he's had a lot of opportunities to make catches underneath coverage and then show where he's grown, where he can make plays after the catch with tremendous speed. Here's the X factor tonight in my mind. Spencer Sanders against the Blitz. Texas loves to come after you with pressure, especially with the linebackers. If Sanders can keep plays alive, Will Texas have anybody back to slow him down from creating and extending plays? That, to me, as I say, is the X factor for the folks tonight. Wallace, an enormous number of yards after the catch. He just abused the Texas secondary in the victory a year ago. Chuba Hubbard, most of those yards are after contact. He's a blazing sprinter, but also very physical. Yeah, wow. and, and I think the physicality and the speed. If they're going to play well tonight, you have to see both of those. Tom Herman's defense has given up more than six yards per play. That's near the bottom of the ranking. So lots to work on. Let's uh, take you inside the Texas locker room moments ago. And I know if we do that, our best is good enough. At some point, they're going to tap out and say, no mas, we want to get back on that plane and go to Stillwater. Okay? But we got to do it. We got to make the choice play after play after play after play to go as hard as we can go for the guy next to you, not for you, for the guy next to you, exactly the way you're trained to do it exactly the way you're trained to do it i love you guys so much i, I i've been I, I couldn't sleep all week because i was excited to watch you guys play espn home of the college football playoff you're watching a presentation of the big 12 on espn the conference opener for oklahoma state and texas Longhorns quarterback Sam Ellinger with a pregame ritual. Kneeling in prayer, and part of that prayer honoring the memory of his dad, Ross, who he lost when he was growing up. Ross passed away during a triathlon in the Bay Area, and Ellinger asking him to watch over him each game. Maria Taylor on the field has the Pokes coach, Mike Gundy. Thanks, Chris. All right, Coach, the last five times you've been to Austin, you left with a win. What's the key to making it six in a row tonight? Well, we just got to stay in our box, you know. Uh, it's good to get off to a fast start, but uh, we just got to do what we do. You know, we've done the same thing for a long time. Just got to make plays, stay on top of the game, try to limit some of what Ellenberg's, Ellen's doing. Now, he's doing a lot better now. What's the key to your offense getting off to that fast start you just described? Well, we, we need to be able to rush the football. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they play us, um, if they sell out to the rush, but it'd be good to start rushing the ball. All right, thanks, Coach. You bet. And before Gundy got there, Oklahoma State had two wins over Texas. He's got seven wins over the Longhorns, all in the last nine years. And, and, and yeah, I mean, he's been an amazing coach, and then you can feel his energy and his players play off of that energy. So it's talked about the last four meetings, what he's done when he's brought this team into Austin with an expectation to win games five straight times they've come into this stadium and been able to walk out with a win. Texas seniors have multiple wins in their careers over every other Big 12 team. Ofer against Oklahoma State. Texas won the toss and deferred, so they'll kick it away. We'll see young Spencer Sanders and the Pokes offense. Cameron Dicker, who has a field goal range of up to 60 yards. Booted a 57-yarder this season. We expect a touchback. Even into a pretty good win. And that's why it's returnable at the three for L.D. Brown. And the orange coverage team wrestles him down at the 21. And here comes this dual threat, which is unusual for this program. Yeah, dual threat brings a whole different element to this offense and what they try to do. He's to play with poise on the road. Remember, he's a redshirt freshman. It's his first big game on the road in conference play. We talked about how he can make plays with his legs, keep them, pl keep those plays alive, and try to find Tylen Wallace downfield with his ability to separate from the secondary of Texas. I think there's a real advantage there for Sanders with Wallace against this secondary, especially the corners from Texas playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. There's a delay because a Longhorn injured covering the kickoff. I believe it's Marcus Tillman, a linebacker, one of two number 13s on the team. 
they have had some injuries coming into this game at the safety spot. You know, these linebackers and safeties for this defense, somewhat interchangeable. It's like one of his own players actually rolled up into him. Until you know, true freshman out of Orlando. They don't do much covering of kicks with this team because we mentioned Dicker's range, but we should also bring up the wind, which is blowing from, from right to left, and that kickoff got up in the wind. Yeah. Tillman will hobble to the sidelines. It's going to be a test of the depth on both defenses tonight, Kirk, if this becomes a typical Big 12 shootout because of the temperatures. It's, well, it's smoking hot here again. We were in here a couple weeks ago against LSU, a very, very similar set of circumstances. And in, in the second half, heat became a big factor. In fact, some of the LSU players had to go into the locker room and get IVs to try to come back and play. Chick-fil-A impact players. Wallace and, and, Chubb, and Hubbard we just talked about. And then you have Osai in the middle, 46, and Chris Brown has got to step up. One of the leaders of this defense, 15, be very, very active, rushing the quarterback and defending the run. Hubbard lined up to the left to Sanders. Tylen Wallace is to the far right. All eyes on the leading receiver in the country so far. Hubbard gets it. And he's bouncing off people in the backfield. The Longhorns penetrate and finally drop him behind the line. That was the safety, Brandon Jones, who got him. But Todd Orlando is the defensive coordinator from Texas, and you and I had a chance with our crew to visit with him. First thing he said in second and third, stop the run. Start with stopping the run. Sell out. Hubbard again, cuts back, gets a block from the quarterback, and muscles back to the 20-yard line. They're playing fast already. Todd Orlando, had, he's, he's aggressive every week, but especially this week, because with a team that can throw and run, you've got to start by taking away that running game and putting this young quarterback into obvious passing situations like this, where then you can get creative with where the pressure might be coming from. Third and 11. Pressure. Flush. Fires on the run, and it's complete to Wallace, who has a first down at the 40, active early. If you're a young receiver, you're going to want to watch Wallace and how he plays this, this position. By the way, it's a no-no to throw that ball where Sanders threw it, but the hands by Wallace to go up and make the play. 20-yard gain. Now Hubbard has space around the left end, and he reels off about seven. A tempo, a big part of what Oklahoma State wants to do. They have a new offensive coordinator, and Sean Gleason came over from Princeton. A little bit unorthodox. I would still say, Chris, it's 80 to 85 percent Mike Gundy. Every time he brings in a coordinator, he allows them to kind of tweak it a bit with some new wrinkles, and that's what Sean Gleason is calling all the plays. And it's play action on second and short. Sanders flips it and is a big cushion for Wallace who makes the catch at the Texas 42. You, you get nervous when you there's a blitz and then you have a safety over top and you got Stearns a safety giving a huge cushion to Wallace to show the respect that he has for the deep ball. There's a look at uh, Sean Gleason the new offensive coordinator. Hubbard gets the edge. Nice blocking by the receivers. That was Dylan Stoner kind of setting the edge, and it's another first down. You know, I started in Athens, Georgia, in the SEC this morning, and now I can comfortably say, after four plays, Big 12 football, boys. Here we go. Well, that, that key completion on third and long has breathed life into this drive. Hubbard's been so busy, they spell him with L.D. Brown, the junior from Dallas. Stoner. Gets the pop pass around the edge and Dylan Stoner, their tough, physical, multi-purpose receiver. Another big gain on first down. Yeah, has an H back out in front. Backup running back, L.D. Brown, helping out along with Logan Carter to lead the way. Love this tempo. Has that aggressive Texas defense on its heels right now. They're not setting the tone. Sanders in the offense is. Tight end was in the backfield as a lead blocker for Brown, but they'll swerve him and drop him for a loss. That was Caden Stearns, the safety. Deshaun Jamison does a good job of coming up right here. He ends up blitzing on the outside, and that's what forced the play to go back and really took it away. Effort right there, and then eventually Stearns is able to make the play, but it was the... The ability to get upfield by the backup corner that time, Jamison, who's acting as a nickelback that made the play. They got Hubbard a breather. He's back in there on third and six. Frenetic opening drive. The ninth play coming up. 
Sanders, pump fake, buying time. Now fires down the middle. Caught inside the five by Landon Wolf. First and goal, Pokes. How about this kid, Sanders? He's a red shirt freshman. We all wondered what kind of poise would he play. This time they use Wallace as a decoy. The tight end takes a couple defenders with him, and it opens up underneath to Wolf, and he beats his man, gets just enough separation. But Sanders is in complete command of this drive right now to open the game up for Oklahoma State. Looks great. Four for four on this opening drive. Pokes have three tight ends, and now a whistle before the snap. Texas called a timeout. A little different look. They are using tight ends more frequently in greater numbers in this offense. Had three in the game. And you said it, Texas defense, which has struggled on its heels right away. Oh, yeah. And, and again, it, if you don't know with Todd Orlando, he, he wants to, especially you come into his stadium, he wants to get you off the field. He wants you to get into that third and long, which they had him, but Sanders made a play. And that really sparked and ignited this drive. And, really crank their tempo up and when Oklahoma State or any offense for that matter can get their tempo going that's every defense's worst nightmare because now you're just holding on for dear life and that's how Texas has been on these nine plays of this opening drive against three overmatched opponents the folks were converting on third down at a 60 percent clip that's ridiculous but they've been sharp against tougher competition so far tonight and now have a first and goal Again, three tight ends, and Hubbard. Hubbard's got it. A wall of blockers. He makes a quick cut, but is stopped at the two. Okay, that's a pretty good effort there by, by Texas' defense to be able to hold that from getting in. It was Graham, the defensive end from the back side. Because I, I was looking in the front side, I thought, boy, he's got blockers in front of him. He's going to get this to the end zone, but Graham, 49, does a good job of chasing that down. Wallace singled out to the far left. Ball spotted just outside the one. Second and goal. Hubbard fumbles the ball. It's on the ground. Is diving for it. Sanders is able to come up with it and retain possession. That looked like boy, right in the middle of that defense. It looked like Cobra 99 may have got a hand on that football. How fast was Sanders to get in there and make the recovery? I know. I know. Tremendous for him to see it and then not hesitate right there and dive for that football. Because that looked like burnt orange all over that. And a Texas recovery. He blows fast. He sure did. Now it's third and goal. Back at the three. With his speed, get him on the outside and let him make a play. Or you have Wallace one-on-one -on -one at the bottom. Hubbard running right, penetration again, tries to cut back, runs into a burnt orange wall. Joseph Osai, the backer, and Texas makes a strong stand, backed up. Well, their leader, Brandon Jones, makes a great play to get off of a block in the tight end and then into the backfield to slow Hubbard down and allow the rest of that defense to rally. Todd Orlando has to be very, very proud of that effort by the defense. They were backed up near their own goal line, made some plays there, three straight plays to force this field goal attempt. Chip shot for Matt Amendola, solid three-year kicker. He's three for three on the young season. The folks were so impressive running and throwing, but they got stopped when they got down to the one-yard line. And, and this is where you want your leader to step up and make a play. 19, right there. Watch him fight through a block, get into the backfield, get a hand on Hubbard just enough, and there's the rest of the defense to rally. It's a good job by Texas to get off the field. Four in a row, scored by UCF before that. Jake McClure, who just held for the field goal, boots it into the end zone, and... Here comes Sam Ellinger, who has worked so hard to develop as a passer. He might be the only one who's not a little surprised by how good he's been. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. I think he's pretty confident in what he can do. Accurate throws against a lot of man-to-man -man tonight. Coach on the field. This is going to be a game that's going to go back and forth. His maturity and leadership are big. And then his toughness. He's healthy this year. I think in the red zone and in short yardage opportunities, he gives him an extra man that Oklahoma State has to account for with his ability to run the football and running through those arm tackles of Oklahoma State. Natural leader. He's like a coach on the field. Play clock down at three. And they hand it off to Keontae Ingram who slips the tackle. And a nice first down game. Here's the Chick-fil-A impact player of Sports Texas. If, if the, 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 
the impact players have a lot to do with Ingram because they should be able to run the football. Duvernay in the slot picks up a lot of yards after the catch. Very, very physical. The linebacker play, I think, will be important to be able to stop the run. Bunga Miga, come on, say it. <laughs> I got to practice before you just throw that on me. It's tough cold. <laughs> Second and four. 11. Empty backfield. Ellinger back against a three-man rush. They drop eight in the coverage. Trying to find somebody open. Now he's going to scamper away. He'll elude a tackler. He shows that tremendous leg strength. And gets within a yard of the marker. Rodriguez stopped him. Uh, they're trying to do a good job of spying with him. Rock Martin does it, it's about as good a job as he can at trying to keep him in the pocket. There's a lot of respect for Sam when he drops back to throw. Not just his arm, but of course his legs. Need a yard and third down. Ingram had a stutter step in the backfield to avoid penetration, but he will move the sticks across the 35. And Oklahoma State, I'm talking about the mismatch somewhat at the line of scrimmage, advantage for Texas, but Oklahoma State just kind of gritty, tough. Tyler Lacey in there, 89. They'll do a lot of slanting and movement, try to occupy that offensive line and try to free those linebackers up to make a lot of tackles against Ingram. Ingram again, delay. He's been impressive with his yards after contact so far this season, bouncing off people. And I think he's finally healthy. And a knee that was bothering him in camp. He's kind of playing the first few weeks of the season and probably at about 90%. Of course, they've had a number of injuries in that backfield. Thankfully for Texas, he's been able to stay healthy. There's the freshman, Whittington, who they lost. Don't ignore Ingram as a receiver. They use him a lot. Ellinger, surveying the field, has a lot of freedom in this offense. And again, Ingram. Fly down as he breaks into the open field and be wrestled out, but it is way back in what would be the holding zone. Yeah, the blitz came and there was a hold there by Parker Braun, who's a transfer from Georgia Run Tech. Holding offense number 73, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, he just kind of hooked him as he came around the edge. They brought a corner, A.J. Green. He was about to get by him, but you'll see 73 pulling the left guard. He'll run right into your family room. See him coming right at you, and he just right there just grabs him, hooks him, and gives Ingram a little bit more room to run. Officials caught it right on top of it. Penalty moves the ball to the Texas 31 instead of being inside the Oklahoma State 35. Negated a 23-yard gain. Ellinger, design run. And he weaves his way out across the 40, gets a big chunk of that yardage back. It'll be third and about four. What a weapon for these offenses today when you can have a quarterback counter design run to be able to get him. You pump fake one way and go the other way with the numbers of your advantage. They just don't have enough defenders on that side of the ball with two pulling linemen to slow him down. And now it's much, much more manageable here, third and four. Roshan Johnson was the third string quarterback. You mentioned the injuries of running back. He has stepped in and despite not playing the position since fifth grade has played well. They're gonna throw for it and it's Duvernay. He just always has to be the focus on third down. So many first down catches this year. Yeah, he's outstanding. It really has stepped up this year. They put him at the slot and has shown an ability to make a lot of plays in that position. Had a big night a few weeks ago against LSU in that second half. 12 catches against the Bayou Bengals. Ellinger has plenty of time and a first down throw. Now he's just going to roll out and take the five yards. So that's Oklahoma State's way of saying, okay, we're going to rush three, and they're really not even really going after him. They're just trying to corral him. They're spying, and they're dropping the rest of the defense into coverage, just trying to make him hold on to the ball the way he did right there. More and more teams in the Big 12 playing that kind of defense. Oh, Spot, yeah. Drop eight. Yeah, yeah. The days of, like, looking at total yardage and passing yards allowed are over. <laughs> now it's how many of the explosives have you allowed? Red zone defense and third down defense is Big 12 football. Ingram back in the game, has the football, and makes the cut but gets only about a yard. Israel Antoine, a transfer from Colorado, was now healthy, made the play. He can contribute in there. He sure can. It, it, it's interesting, the approach here in this opening drive. And they told us leading into this game, Tom Herman and Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, said, listen, you know, we want to run the ball. We, we feel that we have an advantage at the line of scrimmage. And, you know, we don't want to just have Sam back there throwing it around. We think that with Ingram and with Sam running, with the way they play defense, with just three down linemen, we've got to be able to do that. Five receiver, empty backfield on third and five. Ellinger against that three-man rush, has time and delivers, but it's broken up across.
across the middle there. Nice play by Malcolm Rodriguez, who's their do-everything linebacker. Watch him look him up right away. He just turns and dials him up, takes away the inside leverage. Duvernay still got inside of him, but it was the anticipation on third down by Rodriguez expecting it, got his body in position, worked him around the body to avoid the interference, and knocked the ball. That's big-time play by 20. Yeah, he's good in coverage. He can rush the passer leading tackler yeah. his safety experience now at linebacker even though he's undersized has really paid off for, for Oklahoma State so Buzhevsky into punt as the Texas drive stalls and that's a huge win for the folks defense and now the ball eluding the coverage team bounces in for a touchback so Oklahoma State back on offense possession number two coming up they lead it three nothing football on ABC is presented by Wells Fargo this is a commitment to better banking. This is Wells Fargo. In part by the Ford Expedition, built to be a better big. And Chex Mix, score the winning mix. They have had some playmakers over the years in Stillwater. Cowboys return home next Saturday night. They're gonna take on a tough Kansas State team. Seven Eastern time on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. So. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com. Get the app. You get that game and a whole bunch of Big 12 basketball games, hundreds of other conference games, including women's basketball. ESPN Plus. It's called Big 12 Now. Spencer Sanders incredibly impressive in the opening drive, and now the freshman on a design run takes off, gets a big block on the end. They'll string him out, but the speed earns him about three yards. Yeah, Wallace trying to help him get to that edge, and... I, I personally feel watching Mike Gundy over the years when he's got it watch Wallace here known for his ability to make plays Unselfish approach as a big-time wide receiver makes a nice block there on Jalen Green But I, when, when Mike Gundy has a running quarterback, it's a whole different style of offense Jim Hubbard was so busy last week her 32 carries I said that he live in the ice bath this week said, no, Tough Canadian very durable. He says give it to me 30 more times tonight Which is rare to, to see a back today in, in the modern era of the spread and teams loving to throw and get the ball in the perimeter But I I would tell you that I think they'd love to see LD Brown or others Try to take some of the load off him instead of getting over 30 carries a week It's a rare dude in college who can handle that workload. Yeah. He's had it eight times already though in the first quarter Third down and seven. Sanders rolls, chased, flips it downfield. Man, wide open catch made at the 45. Dylan Stoner. Now they say incomplete. Thought he had the ball when he came down. Watch Hubbard here try to pick up this block right there by a day away. And then the ball underthrown. Actually, Stoner gets behind him. And because, because the ball is underthrown as he goes down, hmm. you know what? He never Jones never gave up on the ball and as he fell to the ground He pulled the ball away from stoner. I don't think he completed the process of the catch Dave Katire rules expert nodding his head. He agrees with your assessment Once see stoner fail to come up with many catches like that So it's a three and out in the second possession and now Jake Smith the electric freshman receiver that reminds so many Texas fans of Jordan Shipley He's back to receive the punt of Tom Hutton, the 29-year-old freshman from where else? Australia. And it's an effective directional punt that just takes Smith right out of the play and rolls dead at the 34. Ellinger and the Horns back on the field, down by an early field goal. Great scene around the stadium. As we remind you to check out the Target Command Center, ESPN app and ESPN3. Tried to recreate the Texas State Fair. Still Conti, the athletic director, creating all kinds of food trucks and arcade games. There was a swarm of folks out there. Remember, we used to be quite sleepy. Oh, yeah. For the home oh, games. Yeah. It has changed drastically in the last couple years, for sure. General admission seating now for the students where they get in re really early. Some haven't got in yet. <laughs> Ingram, first to the middle. Still one and hard out across the 45. Hormones moved it 45 yards in nine plays the first possession before stalling. Yeah, nice job on the left side by Cosme, 52. Parker Braun, who had that holding call earlier, part of a double team. He's able to work up to the backers. That's the kind of push that I think Tom Herman expects from this offensive line to open those holes up for Keontae Ingram tonight. So Ellinger will look over. Often he'll get the exact play against the look that Tim Beck 
and Herman Womp, but he has a lot of freedom to make the decisions himself. So you won't see him look over every time tonight, Kurt. Well, I think that, that, that tells you about his third year in the system, just the command that he has. And everybody's marveled about how accurate he's been this year and how much better he looks. I thought he personally played pretty good last year, but I think he, he just looks like a guy who has answers to the questions. A guy that whether he's looking over or, he, or he's making a change on his own with protection or getting into the right call, he knows where he's going to go with the football before he even gets the ball in his hands. And that helps you stay on time and in rhythm. Ingram again. Their bias increases in the midsection of that Pokes defense, and it's a first down at the 42. Okay, so what happens to a defense when they get gutted up the middle for two or three or four plays is you can't help it. It's going to affect the eyes and the safeties and the linebackers, and they start getting sucked up to the inside, and that's when you go perimeter runs or get the ball downfield. And it's Roshan Johnson. I mean, the former quarterback who was just taken to this position so naturally, a nice first down game. And, and when you have a balanced attack like this and you can run and control the line of scrimmage, all of a sudden those safeties, they fall asleep on their responsibilities downfield, and now you get a one-on-one -on -one play downfield and you can make a throw with the accuracy of Sam Ellinger and take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one chances. So you run, you run, and then you can take your chances downfield and throw. When will we see that first downfield shot? Johnson in the clear. This is a guy in high school who ran it as a quarterback 25, 30 times. So he's no stranger to running the ball, but it's still college football. Good uh, position. Uh, Chris, uh, two weeks ago against LSU, Texas offense was sputtering with Ingram, and they brought Johnson in. And I was excited to see this kid who hadn't played running back since he was in fifth grade, what he might do. He brought a spark and an energy to this offense that I think really impressed the coaches. And that's why I think he's the backup running back right now for good, maybe. He went and asked for the position change. He knew he wasn't going to play much at quarterback. says, I can help the team. We're shorthanded. They were pretty surprised and even more surprised that he's shown such quick progress. He's got it again. And muscles for about three. I just got my eyes. The quarterback in me can't help look at the, the safeties. Harville Peel, 31. Again, when you're running the ball like this, the safeties are the ones that have to come up and help when they're when he's untouched for five or seven yards. And when you do that, it's very, very risky to leave the big, tall, wide receivers like Michael Epps and uh, and, and Brennan Eagles one on one. 13 runs, only two passes for Texas so far tonight. Ingram again. What, Not four yards. What, what they're basically saying is until your safeties are going to fully commit, we'll just gladly continue to run, continue to run four, five, six yards a clip. And Oklahoma State saying, hey, we'd rather have you do that than hit us for a home run. So you can work your way down the field instead of hitting one of those big passes and then see if you can execute in the red zone. One of their top linebackers, Abang Mamiga, is out of the game. We're tending to him on the far sideline. Third and four, final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Ellinger from the pocket, across the middle, complete. Duvernay has another first and goal at the five. It opens up because they blitz up the middle, and then look at the opening over the middle where the linebacker came from, and Sam Ellinger almost baited that blitz, just waiting for him to come, waiting for him to come, knowing that he had the middle right behind that blitz, and Duvernay takes advantage. A quick first quarter of long drives. Cowboys struck first, but only with the field goal. Texas threatening after one. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. You ready for the second quarter? Saturday Night Football on ABC. Is it by Wells Fargo? Texas has moved it 60 yards in eight plays. They have a first and goal beginning, or excuse me, second. No, it is first and goal. The stats monitor is two plays behind. Her. <laughs> Get that fixed. It's overheated. Cowboys defense crowding the line. Ellinger from the pocket. A long throw to the end zone. Duvernay. No signal. Yes. Touchdown. What a throw. And, and what a catch by Duvernay. Great throw, but watch the little toe tap as he catches the ball. Yeah, that's good in the NFL. I think he got two feet down. 
Nice job of putting the ball exactly where you want to put it. That's what hours and hours and hours of practice in the summer when no one's watching do for you for Sam Ellinger. Beautiful throw. They did hours and hours, two a days in the summer practicing stuff like that. And Duvernay just continues to have a, a monster month. Unusual formation on the PAT. Krzyzewski, the holder, will now kneel down. And here's Cameron Dicker. So Texas, two productive drives. They stalled at the Pokes 40 the first time, but take it to the end zone. 66-yard drive. And claim the lead, 7-3. Wonder, would the quarterback run it in? No, just make a beautiful throw and a brilliant catch by DuVernay. Texas on top. Devin DuVernay making his senior season count. Had two earlier catches for first downs, then caught the touchdown in his 100th career reception. A slot guy who's pretty fast, very powerful, and the ball skills were, were sick. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think he is a, in a great example of having to pay your dues a little bit. Little Jordan Humphrey last year, such a great player for this offense, and he's moved to that slot spot and has really had a great start to the 2019 season. Dicker boots it away, and in the second quarter has the wind in his back, and it just sails out of the end zone. Maria? Well, Chris, right now we're watching Spencer Sanders, the redshirt freshman for Oklahoma State. Show some poise and leadership over here on the sidelines. Well, he stays centered off the field by doing something a little unique. Since he was 10, he's been a hunter and a fisher. He grew up right northwest of Oklahoma City, and his grandfather used to always take him out into the fields and farms. He was teal duck hunting on Wednesday when I talked to him before practice, and that's just something that he likes to do to get his mind off of football every now and then. Yeah, he's a self-proclaimed country boy. He goes fishing on Mike Gundy's property. Hubbard running left. And he's got five ponds out there, Mike told me. And Spencer can kind of come and go as he wants. He was a little surprised when the other day, Spencer kind of just came into the Gundy household, went to the That's fridge, got cool. himself a drink. That's pretty unannounced. Good. That's a pretty good. <laughs> I, I guess you got so Mike, I guess you got to trust him. He said, I very trust him very much. Yeah, man. That's a nice perk. Have your quarterback over there fishing. He zips it to the tight end, Jelani Woods, and the big fella barrels out across the 45 for a first down. Yeah, I, I think it just tells you a little bit about his personality, and yeah, I, I love that he still does that. Even in season, it's his way, as Maria said, to just kind of escape and just kind of alone time for him. It's pretty cool, very cool hobby. Committed to Oak State, and then Tom Herman got in the plane and tried to get him to decommit and come to Texas. He said, nope, I'm a cowboy. He's got time in the pocket and lost it downfield, but it's intercepted. Picked off, and the Longhorns want to get back. Backup safety, Montrell Estelle, and the mistake by the freshman. Man, I, this is this is part of gro the growing process. Texas sits back in zone, and they've got so many defenders back there that this is one of those plays that you would love to see Sanders. At some point, the clock has to go off in his head. And he has to realize that if he takes off, he picks up big yards, 10, 15 yards, and, and it's not the risk. He, and this is something that Todd Orlando picked up on in film. He's a young quarterback. He has such confidence that he has to make every play on every play. And that's an example of him trying to make a play instead of just taking off and taking the 10 or 15-yard gain because the Texas defense had dropped out. And that's what Mike Gundy's talking to him about, and that's teaching a freshman. He'll learn from that. How will he respond next time he get the football? He can be very, very hard on himself as a temper when he makes a mistake. 37-yard return sets up the Longhorn. Now a reverse. And this is Smith. And the freshman shows the burst around the edge. I, 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 anytime they run a reverse, first thing I do is look up the quarterback, see if he's going to ole or if he's going to put his shoulder into somebody. And Sam puts his shoulder into Malcolm Rodriguez and trying to pick up a block. Did an actually pretty good job of it. Got eight yards. You'd expect to be a tough blocker. I mean, he enjoys contact. He's an enthusiastic yeah. runner. Gets him to settle into the game when he, the more he gets hit early in the game. Well, Sean Johnson is the bat. He's got it. And he'll run right into a wall of Cowboys. Able to fight for the first down to the 17. Now, Texas has been running the ball, obviously, because of the style of defense that Mike Gundy and his, his defense have decided to employ. But a good matchup tonight 
will be A.J. Green, number four, and Darius Williams, number eight, the, the two corners from Oklahoma State, matching up against these very tall and athletic Texas wide receivers. At times, they'll be out there on islands. So far, we've not seen that because they're protecting them with the deep safeties, but eventually, that'll be a good matchup. Second red zone trip for the Longhorns. The first was successful. They clock at three, two, they just get it off. Ellinger from the pocket, fires, end zone, touchdown, Jake Smith. The very hyped prospect at Arizona, Kirk, has four touchdowns already this year. And Chris, watch Sam Ellinger's eyes keep this safety over to allow him to make that throw right there. The head, move the safety, come right back exactly where you want to throw it on a line for a touchdown. Speedy slot receiver beat the linebacker of Bogdanmiga. That's a tough assignment for a guy who's about 230. Dicker knocks it through. Texas cashes in. The interception by Estelle with a touchdown pass to Jake Smith. 14-3, Horns. Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo on ABC, is brought to you by Pacific Life. 150 years strong, protection and retirement solutions for your future. And Burger King. Try the all-new Impossible Whopper, made from plants and now available nationwide, only at Burger King. That's oh. Friday practice here. They call it Family Friday, all kind of fun and games. Big fellas playing dodgeball with a football. First time we saw that was when? Was it UCLA? USC. USC, okay. Pete Carroll, I remember watching them when they get ready for a big game, and it's like, what are they doing? They went by 40 the next day. I was like, keep, keep playing games on Fridays, it's working. Going to be many kickoff returns left to right with that window to the back. Chris Felica, who's the journey along with you from Athens, GA to Texas. Here's got the athletic trivia question tonight. Hello, Bear. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. Sorry you missed last week's athletic trivia question. This week's athletic trivia question. Oklahoma State won the five straight here in Austin. However, I want to know which team holds the record for the longest consecutive road winning streak against a conference opponent. The Florida Long Gators have won a lot against Kentucky in a row. And that might be a, a factor because they would have won all those games in Lexington. I, that, that's my guess, unless you're going back farther than that. I mean, I, it's so broad. Bear, Bear, just go ahead and give us, give us that one. We'll answer tonight's half black tour question here for you. It is Alabama, 19 straight wins against uh, Vanderbilt. And they beat them up there at Vanderbilt Stadium pretty badly uh, a couple years ago. Wow, they sure did. That was the year Vandy made it. Can't wait to see Alabama's statement, I think. It didn't go so well. Second and nine play action. Sanders has a lot of time, and he'll launch it downfield to Wallace, who does what he does. Comes back, beats two defenders, and makes a catch inside the Texas 40. And that's the thing is they have him double teamed. They're trying to keep two defenders on him, and he outruns them, and then goes up and makes the play in traffic. Ball's thrown behind him, so he adjusts back and goes over top of Caden Stearns. That's the beauty for a freshman quarterback to throw to number two. Sanders rolls out, fires a short pass into traffic, and the catch is made by Stoner. He's a problem for every defense, but, well, but Texas hasn't solved it yet. With no, Walker. they put two defenders on him. <laughs> They're, they're trying to double him, take away the inside or the outside move, and he just went right by him. Hubbard's at the edge. He's got a first down, and he's going to be knocked down inside the 25 by Estelle, who just made the pick. And just like that first drive, if you're just tuning in, this is what Oklahoma State did. Had a lot of success. They moved the ball right down the field, only to be stopped inside the five-yard line on a goal line stand and had to settle for a field goal. Oh. And a whistle Hit the before ref? the play. Yeah, that was a... That's a mulligan. Yeah, he, Dave Kataya will bring you in. This is not something you see a lot, and uh, it's, a, it's an oops. As the center judge, right off the backside, <laughs> he's the guy the that they brought in to, to spot line, the ball. So the defense had an opportunity to match up. The ball was not ready for play. Still second down. Well, the problem was the center is not the officials, Dave. No, first down. You don't take that yeah. very often. Uh, no, I don't think I've seen it at all since <laughs> they put a center judge in there, to be honest with you. 
they, they did the right thing, but uh, <laughs> I, I can't. I've never they seen it. speechless. I'm speechless. I mean, Oklahoma State's trying to go fast, but you got to let the center judge get out of there, right? Wallace split far to the right on first down, and it's a reverse. Stoner bouncing off people, chased and dropped way back at the 35 by Jalen Green. Yeah, Jalen Green makes this play anticipating and seeing the jet sweep coming around. He sees this, and he gets upfield in a hurry, gets through two blocks, Wallace and Hubbard, and still makes the play. That's big time. Joe playing fast after the nine-yard loss, and Sanders is loose. He is world-class elusive. And he gets a big chunk of the yardage back, third down, and about seven now. Yep, designed quarterback draw there with Keyes leading the way. But Mike Gundy, you never know. I mean, this could be four down territory, down 14 to three. And they lose nine. They don't care. They're still playing fast. Now they'll slow it down to survey the defense. Hubbard motions back to the right of the quarterback. Plenty of time on the clock. Wallace right here. It's a run to Hubbard. He's going to be dropped in the backfield by Taquan Graham. And Texas defense makes another stand. Graham gets upfield right here and blows the play up. Just is able to get penetration. Pushes Galloway right into the backfield. And you don't see Texas defensive linemen typically dominating and making plays. But that time, Tom Herman very excited to see that. So Amendola out again. First one was 20. This from 43. Cowboys have 148 yards offense at about 20 minutes of clock time. But haven't yet found the end zone. And Mandola is true, but as is almost always the case, touchdowns beat field goals. And Texas lead is eight. The student sections awarding the Livmas Student Section of the Year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Use the hashtag Live My Student Section Contest. General admission for the students here this year, it's a change. They had stormed the castle against LSU. It was disorderly. Now they've changed the policy. You get lined up behind these barriers. It's like airport security without the TSA pre-check. And they come in very slowly. And they have, still haven't got in. So, some have just given up, I think. And stayed out. Call it, call it a night. DuVernay will not have to return it as it bounces out of bounds for a penalty. And they'll spot it at the 35. So Texas has run 21 plays so far in this game. And 16 of them have been on the ground. Offensive line doing exactly what Tom Herman thought they could do. And that's get a great push and open up some running lanes for these backs. And when they have thrown, it hasn't been a lot. You saw this last drive. Look at the protection. Allows Ellinger to throw that football in rhythm. Perfect accuracy and a heck of a toe tapping catch for a touchdown to Devin Duvernay. Right now, Texas enjoying that 14 to 6 lead. They've been able to run the ball better than Oklahoma State has. This Pokes offensive line has not been able to get Chuba Hubbard loose. Came in averaging almost eight yards a carry, and Longhorns have allowed just 30 yards on his first 12 carries. You know, well, Ingram has been running it at 5.4 a clip. New headset for Coach Herman over there. He does get a little wound up. Ingram has to sidestep traffic, makes a great move, just leaves the defender laying on the ground and picks up eight. Now they keep running this counter play where they pull the backside guard and tackle. They're able to get to the edge and then the movement there to get around the safety, Harville Peel. Outstanding shows you that elusiveness when he is healthy. He is a great back. He's gotten stronger and quicker this year. Check with the sidelines. See if they want to get creative here on second and short. Few downfield shots yet. Ellinger thinking about it, and he'll take one. All over the head of John Burt, the track star. Jarek Bernard in coverage. Yeah, we, we talked about eventually there'd be some matchups downfield. Texas has been running and running. Eventually, they're going to take some shots because they get the one-on-one -on -one matchup. And Burt, 
who's a veteran guy and been around, matched up with Bernard, who's a safety. Ball's overthrown a bit, but I think maybe misjudged the timing of the jump by Bird. Now it's third down. They need two. When in doubt, go to Duvernay, and he makes yet another first down catch across the 45. Yeah, they did this against LSU. Trips from the left hash into the boundary. Very crowded, but they're just trying to set up the block. It's like an extension of their running game. A quick throw to the outside. Oklahoma State knew it was coming. Still could not stop it out on the edge. They're looking for improved blocking on the edge for the wide receivers. Hasn't always been great this year. Ellinger. Back pedaling, thinking about running, and now he'll just scoot for a short gain for staff by Antoine. No question that Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma State, is, is saying that, listen, they're not going to get home. They're not going to get to Sam Ellinger with rushing just three, but he's willing to take that chance of dropping eight into coverage and making Sam Ellinger hold on to the football. It's tough, though. You've got a quarterback, as you pointed out, such a command of the offense in his third year, and then such a dangerous runner when things break down. Second down. Johnson will get nothing. Once again, Malcolm Rodriguez continues his strong play this season. Yeah, that's what you want to see from the linebackers and the safeties of this Jim Knowles defense. And the defensive line eat up those linemen the best that they can to free up guys like Rodriguez to be turned loose and, and get downhill in a hurry. And now they got Ellinger again in third down. Not everybody wants to take up the challenge of being a defensive coordinator in the Big 12. <laughs> he came from Duke. <laughs> exactly. Orange needs seven on this third down. So when Sam looks over, He's looking, and, and the, the offensive coordinators are trying to determine, is it going to be a too high look, two safeties, or are they disguising and going to change their look after the snap of the ball, which they are doing. He's snapping it too. Ellinger has plenty of time. Now he's going to roll out and has to flip it short. Catch made by Johnson. And Johnson, converted quarterback, was the outlet receiver. First down at the 35. So they did exactly what Knowles wanted. They showed that too high look. And then change, watch those safeties change. They go to the middle, they play man. They fooled Sam Ellinger, very, very fortunate to get the ball to Johnson and then for him to break that tackle and then be able to pick up that first down. So Knowles trying to show one look because he knows Sam's looking over, try to make them think they're in one coverage and then go to another after the snap. At 15 yards on third and seven, and Johnson knocked down. Texas continues to just convert third downs at a crazy yeah. clip. Five for six tonight. And they were close to 60% of the season coming in. Yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with being in third and manageable, but also having a veteran quarterback that can throw accurately and can also take off, extend, and sometimes take off and run for those first downs. Play action. Ellinger put the sit deep. The end zone and over the head of Epps in coverage was for Darius Williams, third down. And keep in mind, Epps is 6-5, six, six, and you think that that's an advantage, but Williams, who's a veteran, he's been around. This is his 30th start tonight. He's at 6 feet, about 187 pounds, and has long arms. So both A.J. Green, who's an all-conference corner, four on one side, and Williams, who is in coverage there, both have great length to match up with the size of these Texas receivers. Another third down. They each guy's made 29 starts. They've played a lot of football. Empty backfield. Cowboys do bring some late pressure. Ball out quickly. Catch made, but this time DuVernay cannot get first down yardage. Harvell Peel stopped him right there. It's fourth down and three. And a change up by Jim Knowles there. Looks like they're going to go hurry up. See, that time he blitzed instead of just rushing the three, and it worked. So hurry up. Trying to catch the Cowboy defense. Winded and not lined up. Doesn't work. They hand it off to Johnson, and he is hammered. And that Oklahoma State sideline comes to life as the Cowboys defense gets a stop. Well, that is a great effort by Oklahoma State on fourth down, getting lined up and then being able to get penetration, out fight the Texas offensive line, and come up with that big stop. See Sterling on the backside helping out. Needed a spark. Maybe that was it. Still down. Eight. Nice night to fly. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear.
recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Good year, more driven. Streets of Austin, empty and quiet. Folks that don't have a ticket inside watching the game. That was not the case the last couple nights, partner. I, I <laughs> promise you. Missed you. Oh, I missed being here. <laughs> Hubbard, he's been contained really well. Came in with more rushing yards than any back in the country. And Texas focused from the start on stopping him. Now a flag comes down on the tackle there. Dayway and Bimage were on the stop. See Tom Herman coming down to talk to Todd Orlando. Just a taunting penalty. Referee looks like he was warning him and talking to him, and then eventually another flag came in. This is a, often a salty series. Texas tried to downplay the payback thing, but this is a game they badly won, and there's no shortage After of bad play, blood at times. Foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 42, throwing down the runner. 50-yard penalty so and a body slam down. by Bimage after the whistle. Well, they got in there and made a big-time play. Again, they've been you know, he's body slammed right there. I mean, and, but what you're not seeing is the whistle was already blown. And he'd already been called down. And then if you just let him or just kind of push him down, but to follow through with that right arm, that, that's kind of sh alerting the official, I'm slamming this dude's head into the ground. Well, he's out of the game now after that mental mistake that moves the ball to the 45. Wow, man, they are all over Chuba Hubbard. They said not tonight, number 30. The Canadian has been corralled. Absolutely, and again, it's the corner, Jamison. You're going to see him fly up out of nowhere on a blitz. Blows the play up right there. Undercuts the receiver trying to make a block. He never had a chance with that blitz. Good call by Todd Orlando to get him in there quickly. He faked it to him, and now Sanders from the pocket launches a downfield shot. Johnson caught it inside the five. Braden Johnson with a huge play sets up the post first and goal. Play. You know, you're used to Wallace being that guy, but at the slot, this time it's one-on-one -on -one with one of the top defensive backs in Chris Brown. Perfect throw, by the way, by Sanders to lead him that way. Hubbard now tries to bounce it to the edge. He'll be dropped for a loss. Braden Jones is ha Brandon Jones having a monster first half. He sure has. That's his third big play here in this first half. Came up with that big fourth down play. Where he's able to get penetration. His job is to protect that edge, and he's doing a heck of a job of that, especially down inside, deep in their own territory. He's a guy that you pointed out ripped the ball out of the hands of Dylan Sonner, which prevented a big play earlier. So, great first half for the Longhorn safety. Texas rotating five new players in for this play. Wallace at the bottom of your screen. Keeper. Sanders can't escape. Drop for a loss again by Taquan Graham. Pokes going backwards. Yeah, he actually misreads this. Got to be careful of predetermining your read. If he collapses, you pull. If he stays wide, you give. He kind of baited him, made it look like he was going to go at the back and instead stay wide. Misread there by the freshman. Diamond formation. Hubbard's one of four receivers to the left, but Sanders wants to run it. Can he get there? Dives. Score! You see the speed of the quarterback, and Oklahoma State finds the end zone for the first time. That's all individual effort there. That play was taken away by Texas's defense on the quarterback draw. He ends up bouncing that to the outside. Caden Stearns, one of the better tacklers on this team, is there to make the play, and he just uses a stiff arm to get her outside and around him, and then he's able to get to the end zone. Big time play there on third down. 19-year-old making his fourth start. He has looked poised tonight. He has recovered from the overthrow, the interception that set up the Texas touchdown. That's what we're going to watch for. Could he bounce back on the road? So far, he has. It was, it was interesting to see him mature right before our eyes. Makes a mistake, goes over. You can see Mike Gundy teaching, coaching. There's the stiff arm. Leads them down six plays, 70 yards. Makes a few throws. Makes that big run right there. Oklahoma State right back in business. One point game. Coming up, the Dish Halftime Report. Kevin Nagandi, Mark Sanchez, Jonathan Vilma. Scores and highlights, updates what's going on in Athens, Georgia. We know many of you also care about Notre Dame and 
Ugga, no points yet there. Yeah, I, I think anybody watching this game, it's just a neutral fan watching this game. How can you not be impressed with Spencer Sanders, the red shirt freshman, and this first half that he has had, 9 of 11, 164 yards, running around, making some plays, keeping his team fighting here in this first half. That was funky because a fair catch was signaled for, and then Smith stepped out of the way, let it hit the ground, but the fair catch stands, and he'll start at the 25. And it has been an interesting first half for him because there's been some ups and some downs. He's a dual guy. He can run. He can throw. This is a play where he should have scrambled and taken off instead. He makes an errant throw. It's intercepted, and Mike Gundy dealing with a freshman, talking to him. No problem. He's been here. He's 15 years as a head coach. And all of a sudden, he just keep coaching, keep teaching. How about that throw on the last drive? And then a big-time play here to show you his athletic ability, the speed, the strength, the stiff arm, and the instincts to get into the end zone. So, like I said, he's growing up right before our eyes, and you got to like what you see so far. Gundy Mayer said, listen, Spencer, if you want to keep coming and fishing in my pond, you got to bounce back from that interception. <laughs> that what he said I don't think that's exactly what he said. <laughs> you like those large mouth bass? <laughs> And it's batted down. Ellinger tried to get the ball, but Brock Martin, they move him around everywhere, got a big hand up. Yeah, again, they've been mainly rushing three, but the last, last few plays we've seen a little bit more pressure. Martin that time able to time that up. If you can't get to the quarterback, use your eyes and your athletic ability and get your hands up to knock down those quick throws. Second down, they try to get it to Duvernay on the edge. Does get a block over there, and they pick up about six. And it, again, it gets this Texas offense to third down, where they are five of seven. And let's just kind of watch the game within the game. Sam's going to go fast. We'll see if he kind of using that as a decoy to look over, to try to get a look at the defense, or if he actually does go fast. Yeah, he's going to get a look. And you get the three down linemen, the two linebackers kind of walked up there near the line, but they've been rushing three. Let's see if they sit with three or if they end up bringing a backer. Duvernay, slot left. Ingram is the back. And they get it out to Duvernay. And it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Is it first down yardage? It's close. And yes, they will move to six. Keep the drive going. Yeah, that's just a numbers game. They saw Kevin Henry sitting as, as the player in conflict in the slot. Is he in towards the line of scrimmage or is he out in the perimeter? And they thought. He was too much in the box, got it to go to the outside. Ellinger, downfield shot, man wide open, catch made, Brandon Eagles able to catch the spinner, touchdown Texas. Churn, churn, churn with the running game, and then take the home run shot, 73 yards, Kirk. And, and that's a miscue by the defense. Just a mental error by a veteran corner who's an all-conference player in A.J. Green. He came off of Eagles and actually went to the inside receiver. So a mental error, the first bust we've seen by this Oklahoma State secondary. And there's the veteran vision of Sam Ellinger seeing the bust and making the accurate throw for another big play. Lightning fast sophomore from Houston. That's the seventh catch he has already this year of 25 plus yards. Texas. Body blows, Kirk, and then the haymaker. Longest play from scrimmage for Texas this season. And they're back up 21-13. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we talked about in the in the first half. When Texas can run the ball, they're basically lulling your secondary to sleep. And then it's a matter of time that Sam Ellinger is going to take a shot and capitalize, and in this case, it wasn't necessarily the design of the play, it was just the awareness by Ellinger seeing the bust in coverage by Oklahoma State. They want very specific skill sets in the three receiver positions, and that Z receiver, they just want a sprinter out there who can run by people, and Eagles is that guy. Yeah, Cade Brewer, the tight end, for whatever reason, occupies the corner. Watch the corner out here who's matched up with Eagles. For whatever reason, he's gonna get occupied with the big tight end Brewer. Watch him for whatever reason right here, jump off and move to the inside. Once he does that, there's nobody left with Eagles. And Ellinger sees that, so miscommunication there between the veteran Green and the, and the safety Bernard. Comes off of him, jumps the inside, and it leaves Eagles with all that speed and size as an easy target for Ellinger to throw. And now Sanders breaking tackles. 
Can he get the edge? Yes, he can. He just blazes out to the 30. Pokes with exactly two minutes to work with before halftime. They have all three timeouts. Well, how pretty is he when he gets out into the open space? I mean, Oklahoma State, they've had some great quarterbacks come through this program. It's been a long time since they had a guy that can run like this. Maybe never. <laughs> Catch made by McCray, and he plows out across the 40. Some tremendous pocket passers. Mason Rudolph, they oh, couldn't yeah. run, but this guy yeah. is a different gear. Yeah, and they've had some guys that were dual guys, but this is a, di this is a different deal. And he can throw the football. He's got a big arm. Yeah, we've seen that in the first half. Hubbard, can they get him loose? Delayed handoff, and he barrels into Texas territory. So quickly, in about 30 seconds, they're threatening again. Haven't had to use a timeout yet. Great call with the draw to get the linemen up into those linebackers' faces. Hubbard loose again. Well, Anderson said, in this league, you don't really have the two-minute offense until the last 45 seconds of the half. No. You just do your regular stuff. That's right. That's right. Texas player is down. Well, a breather for the Texas defense in the meantime. Next week, we're off to Lincoln. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. The Buckeyes just scoring at will. Cornhuskers struggling tonight in Champaign. They were down a couple touchdowns to Illinois. Scott Frost still looking for his first road win. Got it back to 14 to 7, but they will be home dogs against the Buckeyes as Malcolm Roach didn't appear to be too seriously hurt. Comes uh, off the field. Yeah, he, he he went down. We we hope he's okay. I'm sure he'll be back, but boy, it slowed down. That I'm chuckling because it's pretty obvious in the replay that he just took a dive. <laughs> sure looked like that. Uh, four plays in a blink of an eye, 34 yards. Sanders bobbles the snap, and he'll be swarmed for a big loss. Mitchell got there, but the timing thrown off as he took a peek upfield. I think he did. It was the ball was in the air. I think he's looking upfield to kind of decide what he wants to do with the with the football. And just by taking his eyes off the ball just for a split second, caused that fumble. Again, part of the growing of a freshman quarterback. Some really exciting plays, and then some plays that, you know, it's he he's still showing his youth. Now a flag. Initial signal was false start, but this Big 12 crew of David Alvarez talking about it. There's no foul for false start. Oklahoma State called their first time out of the half. So they had three, they used one. In length. It looked like they were trying to play quickly before they took the timeout. It's interesting to me that even after a negative play where the quarterback has made a mistake, they still get back to the line and try to play fast rather than just taking a deep breath. Uh, it's, it's just the DNA of their offense. It's the DNA of a lot of the offenses in the Big 12, and it, it, it's, it doesn't follow conventional wisdom. You know, you, you would think, hey, let's, 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 we're on the road. You got a young quarterback, let's, it's, it, but that's not, that's not who they are. And that's what I really respect about Mike Gundy is once he puts his quarterback in there, that's the way they practice year-round. That's the way they play. That's the way they call the games. You can't play fast a lot of times, though, but then in certain situations, think well, that maybe yeah. it's just a little bit better to sort of get organized yeah, yeah I rather agree than just with play that. fast. I agree with that, but at this point, with a minute to go, and by the way, the injury of Roach really slowed down this, this momentum that they had created. Third and nine, Sanders launching, Wallace, and another receiver. Jump ball broke it up. Don't know if that's the way they drew it up because Wolf and Wallace drew two DBs to that corner. No, that's not, that's not what you want, ideally, as an offense, to have to have two defensive backs there and two receivers going up for the football. My guess is number two is in the right spot. My, my, my thought is if I'm a quarterback, third down near the end of the half, I'm looking, where is two? There he is. I'm going to be throwing it downfield to him and let him do his thing. So the Cowboys trying to cut into this lead before halftime stall. And Tom Hutton, the punter, is on. And Texas will spend a timeout just to make sure they're clear. It's one of those situations where if Gundy were in a gambling mood, he might pull out a fake. It's been a fun first half. Back and forth. Sanders, we've seen... The young freshman flashed some talent. He made a mistake, which resulted in a pick and a touchdown for Texas, but he's responded pretty well. Yeah, he has. And now you got to think 56 seconds to go. 
Texas is pretty aggressive. They trust their quarterback. Why not get more points? You know, and that's 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 again the mindset I think of the Big 12. And of course, when you have a veteran quarterback like Sam Ellinger, but it's been a great game. It's gonna be an even better second half, I think. And we've seen Ellinger continue his brilliant play from the first month of the season. You talk about the guys who are early. I get it. Early Heisman Trophy contenders. Ellinger has to be within the top handful of players in the country. Oh yeah. I mean, if you're paying attention to. The stats and, and the way he's performed, absolutely. LSU lost, but not on him. Hut boots it high with backspin, and Smith will come up, bobbles, and it's a muff and a scrum at the 15. Is this a freshman mistake? It will set up Oklahoma State. We'll see who's got the football. Looks like wow. the Cowboys have it to the muff. With 45 seconds by the freshman, gives the Pokes a serious chance to cut into this lead. Well, it looked like Harbaugh Peel was down there. I mean, you can see they're in perfect position. There's 31. Yeah, I think it is. I think the safety, the starting safety, it's exactly who got his hands on the ball. It was a melee there at the beginning. And eventually, 31 off to the left. Ball bounces right to him. And he does a good job of collapsing. And now Oklahoma State. Outstanding opportunity here. One turnover for each team. Sanders took a quick peek and then took off, but he was slammed right at the line of scrimmage there by Osai. Osai read that, got off of the block, and made that play in a hurry. Or that had a chance for big yards. Wallace is at the bottom. They've got two defenders on him now. Sanders looking that way and now flips it underneath and wow big shot delivered to the legs of Chuba Hubbard He is cut down and the man who hit him green paid a price Hubbard is is strong Runs bigger than his 207 pounds a lot of power. Oh, yeah in those legs. Yeah, I and mean, he was going full speed and green a corner comes off of Wallace and so you know he throws his shoulder right into the legs going full speed of you know I, I think Hubbard runs powerfully at 207 pounds I mean, that, that's a big collision right on that right shoulder you can see right away he starts to move that hand he had some numbness some tingling there that it's an uncomfortable feeling for a defender Hubbard makes his first catch of the night Kirk we talked about the workload last week 32 carries against Tulsa he's got 17 in the first half, but only 44 yards on the ground. And a good job containing him, really good job. Well, they came in, that was their entire goal, was to put the game on the back of the, the freshman quarterback, ma make him make throws, try to take away Hubbard, do the best they could against Wallace with two defenders. So Green helped off by the athletic trainers. Football back at the eight yard line. It's a third down and three. They need the five to move the sticks. And they still have the two timeouts with 19 seconds. So the full playbook is open to them with those timeouts to use. You always wonder if you use Wallace as a decoy or if you put him where you think he can make a play. Hubbard barreling forward, still charging, reaches the football, Mark Short. How about that for power? I mean, that, that's, you, you want to know how he can run? I love his body lean when he runs in between tackles. He, look at him lower his shoulder takes that big hit. He thought he's by scored. Brown. I think he's yeah, his knees down He's at about the y y one yard line But he boy, he accelerates through that hole and through the collision He's been frustrated so far in this first half But you can tell Ram with serious determination for us pylon cam will confirm the call They did stop the clock with the first down, but the pokes will use their second time out here. Play caller was Sean Gleason just coming over the first year as the OC from Princeton. He's you know, you've got the running quarterback as an option down here. You can try what you just had with Hubbard powering in between the tackles. He's impressive, isn't he? He really is. Yeah. Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury tried to hire him with the Arizona Cardinals, yeah. but he wanted to come here to Oklahoma State. Continues with the interesting, colorful tradition of OCs under Gundy. He didn't really fit the mold, but he's doing a good job. First and goal. Hubbard. Touchdown, Oklahoma State converts the muff into six points and once again cuts into the lead. Well, that was
was very good patience by Hubbard, even though it was a short run. Texas had a little bit of penetration and a pulling guard by Oklahoma State, and they got up into his face, and he just kind of sidestepped that penetration and then got into the end zone. That is a big turn of events there at the end of this first half. On his 19th carry in the half, his eighth rushing touchdown this season. So each team's had a, a freshman player make a mistake that set up a touchdown for the other side. And it's once again a one-point game. Yeah, the, the mistake and miscue by the freshman, Smith, puts this ball on the ground. Oklahoma State in perfect position with their cover team, and Harville Peel picks it up. And watch this little stutter step. Penetration by Malcolm Roach. Just a little movement to his right instead of trying to run into the back of his guard that was pulling around. Instead, he's able to work around the big fella, Marcus Keys, and an easy touchdown. And how about this? <laughs> well, if you can lip read, you can see he was pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. pleased with I mean, <laughs> it. You know, and football's football, but it's pretty cool for him. I mean, it, this year, moving over from the Ivy League, he's gone to Corvallis, and he's gone on the road to Tulsa. And now he's in Austin, Texas, in this environment, calling plays with a young quarterback, with a great running back and a great receiver. And they're in a 21-20 game with 11 seconds to go in the first half. It's pretty good. Here we are in Texas, and the OC from the Ivy League calling plays for a running back from Canada. And Hubbard really rededicated himself in the offseason, worked incredibly hard. This is his chance. He came to Stillwater from Canada to make a future in football and take care of his family. And he is a determined young player. DuVernay from the eight. And DuVernay knocked down across the 30 with seven seconds before halftime. Monday, the 50th season of Monday Night Football continues. Bears take on the Redskins. Monday Night Countdown at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then Chicago and Washington at 8 o'clock on ESPN, also on Deportes and the app. So Texas will get the football to begin the second half. Figures to be... Just a kneel down here. And Kirk, 259 total offense for the Longhorns, 252 for the Pokes. And we had a 38 point second quarter after three points in the first quarter. Yeah. We're just getting warmed up. Oh, oh, the second half, I promise you. It's going to even get better. Kevin Nagandi, Mark Sanchez, Jonathan Bilba, the halftime report coming up right after these messages here on ABC. presented by Wells Fargo in this presentation of the Big 12 on ESPN. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herb Street, Maria Taylor caught our breath at halftime. First half that featured seven scoring possessions and three punts. We are on pace, Kirk, for 1,000 yards of total offense. Ellinger and the Horns get it to begin the third quarter. Yeah, you, you can expect more of the same. The interesting thing is both these coaches are known for their in-game adjustments, especially the offensive side of the football. So this is a long way to go. I think both teams kind of feeling each other out, and now we see how they make the adjustments to really see if they can take advantage of the defenses that they've seen in the first half. Todd Orlando, defensive coordinator for Texas, calls it the NBA here in the Big 12. Lots of scoring runs, back and forth, momentum shifts, and then it comes down to the final couple possessions, usually. It does. It really does. by McClure, and it is DuVernay at the goal line. And the receiver, who is such a productive part of the offense in the first half, hit hard at the 21-yard line. Here's our Pacific Life game summary. Well, it's been a, a, a really good first half for Sam Ellinger, 10 of 14. The accuracy right here, the first touchdown pass, recognizing and seeing a bust in coverage and, and capitalizing with a throw to Eagles to put him up 14 to 3. But it's been back and forth. And this was a miscue late in that first half by the freshman, Jake Smith. Oklahoma State jumps on it, and then they get the football late before the half. And they're able to capitalize to make this a one-point game to set up a uh, should be a really interesting second half. 
Ellinger said after the win last week, when we play to our standard, no one can stop this offense. That's the belief they have. Ingram is stopped right there and wrestled down for a two-yard gain. And he wouldn't back off that safe, but that's just what they feel. When, with the weapons they have, with the scheme, with his experience now, he doesn't really believe that, that a defense can stop him. Well, I, I think he's not just saying that, and I think a lot of quarterbacks would say that. Uh, but I think in his case, I think he's he's pretty accurate when they are going and they're hitting a tempo and hit, they're running and they're throwing and he's reading the defense and, and making good decisions. Uh, th they're a handful for anybody to slow down. Last play by Brendan Evers. Really good play at the nose. Ingram motions out empty backfield on second and nine. Folks. Bring a fourth rusher, ball gets out, and the catch is made by Cade Brewer, but the tight end is tackled right there by Abang Vamiga. Third down. They have gotten Ellinger and Texas into these third downs. First half, six of eight. So they had answers for the different looks that Jim Knowles came up with. Most often they would look for DuVernay. He's in the slot to the left. Eight catches, excuse me, seven catches on eight targets. And Duvernay right here. The Linger has plenty of time and delivers a strike across the middle. It's Duvernay again. It's a first down again. Well, we pointed him out in the slot and he works his way over to the middle, kind of eyeing that safety and trying to determine where he might be, Harbo Peel. But it's a good job coming back to the football there on third and medium. And I, you, I think the more this year goes on, Sam Ellinger and Duvernay always seem to be in sync on third down. Ingram, little crease, quick burst, shows his strength. He has just been extremely strong after contact again tonight. Also the vision, that, that play is designed to work to the left. But you can tell by the flow of the defense that he had to bounce that all the way back to the right and find that hole for those big yards. From the 42, it's first and 10. 16 yard gain. Ellinger looking to throw on first down. It's a downfield shot. Looping play over the head of Malcolm Epps. Williams in coverage. Great job by Ellinger reading Jim Knowles defense. They showed one look, again, went to another, and what they went to is single coverage and he the receiver this time Epps went right by the veteran Williams the progressive pylon cam showing you how closely they came to came to connecting but that's great recognition after the snap by Ellinger he found the matchup they're just unable to hit it second down handoff to Ingram and he's swarmed right there one yard loss Trey Sterling the backup safety got him Texas crowd wanted a flag for the enthusiastic tackle. Well, it's because they got called on them. You know, they had one of their defenders make a similar tackle. The difference was that player threw the, ru the running back from Oklahoma State on the ground and whipped him into the ground. And that's what made that call. Once again, Ellinger called on to make a, a sharp play on third down. This time they need 11. Looking to his right, and it's incomplete. Bounce, he's trying to get the ball to John Burke. A.J. Green in coverage. Excuse me, Eagles was the intended receiver. But at the top of the route, there was a little bit of contact, and that's what I think the crowd is reacting to. Remember, Green is a veteran, making his 30th start tonight. See where he grabbed a hold of him at the top of the route? Try, and Eagles is trying to get out of that grasp and trying to get back to the ball, and the officials let it go. Just the second punt tonight for Ryan Bichewski. We'll try to pin the pokes deep. Dylan Stoner is the returner at his eight yard line. Dylan Stoner is back. And once again, well, this time it's going to work out better. It's going to bounce backward, not ideal execution because they can't doubt it before it bounces back to the 18 yard line. And that's where Oklahoma State will take over for their first possession of the third quarter. here in Austin, Texas, and I spent a little time with Mike Gundy coming back on the field. For offense, he says that they have to mix it up a little bit more, and he feels like that Texas defense right now is 
daring them to throw the ball. And an update for the Texas D, Jalen Green, remember he left holding his wrist at the end of the first half. He's still being evaluated right now in the locker room for the starting corner right now for Texas, still being evaluated, guys. Good stuff, Maria. Keeper, Sanders behind a block. Pretty well contained. It's about four. And what Maria said about Mike Gundy feeling they're daring them to throw the ball, it's because Todd Orlando, that, that play right there, first play of the day of the ball in the second half, they're blitzing. I mean, they are coming after the running game and trying to come after Sanders and Hubbard and see if the young guy can keep throwing the football to have to move the ball downfield. Here's Hubbard with a nice gain, hard hit. Oklahoma State offensive line, though, has not been winning the battle up front against Texas. That's no, for not, sure. not, not the way I think they anticipated it. I think collectively as a staff, they feel this is the best offensive line left to right they've had in a long time. You get enough of a push to get Hubbard first down yardage to the 28. The beauty of having a guy like Wallace, a, a, a superior wide receiver on the outside, is defenses have to typically say, we're going to put a safety over top of him with a corner. And if they do that, you're going to double team him. You have to be able to win the line of scrimmage and run the football with, with both the Hubbard and the quarterback. The numbers should work out to your advantage. But again, Orlando, as you said, mission one contained number 30. So far, done a pretty good job. They fake it to him. And Sanders throws it across the middle. And the catch is made by Stoner, who takes a shot but holds on. Stearns hit him. But a first down at the 44. He is down on the field. Stearns. See, when, when the linebackers start to cheat up, there's going to be nice holes behind that. And I, I think Stoner's a guy that they have a lot of confidence in. While Wallace gets all the credit, they say that Stoner's probably the hardest worker on the team. Just a gym rat, a tough guy, and a, tr a great leader. There, he does a good job of concentrating, knowing he's about to get a big hit there by Stearns. Obviously, concern for Stearns on top of what Maria reported, the injury to Jalen Green starting corner who's not returned so two of the starting defensive backs for texas dealing with health issues well they look at stearns will step out night football presented by wells fargo on abc is brought to you by nissan premier partner of the heisman trophy and general mills Bring more to your game day with General Mills tailgate recipes. See what you can create at wearetailgatenation.com. McCoy was the starting quarterback the last time Texas beat the Pokes here in Austin. Big play to Shipley late in the game. Brian Arakpo was on that. That was probably Mac Brown's second best team after the championship team. Yeah. And that's what it took to beat Oklahoma State on this field for Texas. Those 05, 06 teams, obviously elite. Stern still out. Sanders escapes, shows that speed around the edge, tiptoes for first down yardage. It's a good job with his speed to get to the outside, but also a good job of blocking by Stoner, and especially Wallace, too. Watch him stay on his guy. He works to the inside, then he climbs and goes back to Boyce to corner to give him room to get to that first down. Unselfish superstar one of the top receivers in the country known for his ability to catch the ball but I love what he does without the ball in his hands again the burst from Sanders is just elite Hubbard sheds tackles and beginning to get number 30 lose it he's just getting warmed up that's yet another carry is 20 seconds yeah and, I, and I, I agree with you it does feel like he's just getting better as this game goes on and also better blocking to give him a chance at least to get upfield. At that time, they worked the edge of that defense at Texas. Keeper again. Similar play. He kind of starts inside, goes outside. Wallace makes a block again. Uh, they, they're, they're, they're finding an area that they want to take advantage of. And there's a, a scuffle over there. Uh, hit late there towards the boundary. Frustration building on this Texas defense. You can feel it as the pokes have begun to get the ground game going. And every time the quarterback escapes and gets loose for a gain, it can eat at a defense. Absolutely. You see the leverage that they have. Texas not aligned to the play. outside. The it gives it out easy bounds. for them to defense. get to the on the edge of this defense. Chris Brown yeah. laid a hit after Sanders had clearly crossed out of bounds. And that penalty will move the football into the red zone. First down at the 17 as Oklahoma State 
tries to reclaim the lead for the first time since it was 3 zip. We talked about adjustments, in-game adjustments by Gundy and Herman and how good they are at doing that. So far, what we're seeing is they want to run the ball and try to get it to the outside and work the corners and the edges, make, them, make tackles out there. Hubbard shows his patience. He's so complete as a back, known as a sprinter in Canada. I mean, the junior world champion. He was that good on the track. Hasn't had a chance to get really in the open field yet but, tonight. But what I see is that just instincts as a runner, too. I mean, not just strong and, and physical and fast. He's got great patience and vision, man. It, it, that, that you kind of either have that or you don't. Offense. Exactly what Gundy said. You cannot coach those instincts. He said that Thurman Thomas, the great Cowboy running back, had similar kind of instincts. That's pretty high praise when you compare him to Thurman Thomas. Oh, absolutely. Thomas, of course, before he went on to the great career with the Buffalo Bills, was the running back in 84 to 87. Just after Barry Sanders came on the scene after that. Second and 11 after a false start, and Hubbard runs into traffic. They're just trying to run to the short side of the field well, now. Chris, whenever I talk to you about Wallace and why I have Wallace out there, you have to put a safety back here because he maybe could go there. Well, when they do that, you've got to be able to run that way. If they're going to keep their safeties back, it makes it easy. Look at all that space and that cushion. That's what they're looking at. If they're going to have a safety behind Wallace, take advantage. Big play here, third and four. Texas subbing some guys ready to get lined up now. Sanders takes off and sidesteps the tackle but does not get the first down. Jawan Mitchell in space did his job and his fourth down about a yard and a half. Not only did he do his job, he took on a block from Johnny Wilson, got around him, and then made the tackle. It's like Andre Coburn, the nose tackle, is down. So now a decision. And Mandola basically automatic. It would be a chip shot for the lead. Gundy does not feel like gambling here. The spot of the football is inside the 10. They have to get just outside the 7. Center Johnny Wilson, 72, tries to get up to that backer Mitchell, but the quickness, the quickness to be able to dissect the play and get to the play prevents Sanders from getting that first down. That was a good job. Well, they're rotating a lot of different bodies in there. They've had some injuries. They're trying to stay fresh. Obviously, some guys have been going down. It's a hot night. Really, this defense really on both sides being tested. The problem late in games is the Texas defense has been worn down. LSU put 22 on the board in the fourth quarter of that win. So Texas just couldn't catch up. The backups have given up a couple of touchdowns in two routes, kind of in garbage time. But they have allowed 49 points in the fourth quarter this year. Not there yet, but it's going to be, as we said at the top, a test of stamina for both defenses. Well, it's good to see the big fella up and walking off the field. Coburn, a 340-pounder from Houston. Normally with Mike Gunny, you just never know what to expect. But in a 21-20 game on the road, 8-21 to go into third. Pretty good drive here to start this second half. See the 10 plays, 74 yards, only one pass. Expect that field goal. Keep it, get him to lead. Amendola, the rare Pennsylvanian in this game. There's so many guys from Texas and Oklahoma. From 27 for the lead. Straight down the middle. And it was an impressive drive by Oklahoma State. 11 plays, and they reclaim a two-point lead on the road. Goodyear providing aerial coverage. The best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go farther with Goodyear, more driven. NFL countdown for week three. Featuring Patrick Mahomes on the art of the no-look pass. That was cool last week. Sean Watson, former Clemson Tiger, in his off-season trip around the world. We'll saw the breaking stories. Sunday NFL countdown tomorrow morning, 10 Eastern on ESPN. So now an important possession for Texas coming up. Oklahoma State 
with its first possession of the second half. Drove it 74 yards, and they're back in front. Austin Westlake is a powerhouse. There's so many high schools out here that produced great quarterbacks, but maybe none more than this place. Drew Brees, of course, the legend. <laughs> Think about that. And then Nick Foles, another Super Bowl winning quarterback. Not, not on the high def era yet. And now Sam Ellinger, who came along trying to emulate those guys, keep the tradition alive, and look at the I, numbers. I asked them. him if he had any personal goals and he, two weeks ago, and he said in high school he, he always had a goal of trying to beat Drew Brees and Nick Foles as far as their passing yards in a career and, and touchdowns. And I'm talking about two Super Bowl winning quarterbacks from that high school. It's a pretty good effort and a good goal, and he accomplished it. Ellinger, a long throw. Duvernay. Not able to escape this time. His numbers would have been better, Kirk, but he had so many injuries his senior year. Both knees, the meniscus injured, broke his hand, then broke his wrist. Finally, that did it for the year, the fourth the fourth injury. And that messed with his mechanics yeah. and really set him back when he got to Texas. It sure did. Between his freshman and sophomore year, Tom Herman really feels that's the area and the time that he improved the most with his release, making it a lot quicker coming off those injuries. Uh, he's healthy now, and he's off and running, and bulldozing his way out across the 40 for a first down. It all starts, you know, with your legs, right? Your footwork, your accuracy. When your knees oh, yeah. are gimpy, you can't really kind of get settled in and improve. Yeah. Yeah. Even last year, he was playing with a hurt shoulder. And for a guy that's a, a power running quarterback, that, that, that can take a toll as well. Got 15 on the run. Now finds Duvernay, who splits defenders and dives near the marker into Oklahoma State territory. Yeah, he's just counting the numbers. That's, that's either a run. If, if, if the defense is outside too far on the pass game, he'll hand it off. Or if they're in too tight, he'll throw it to the outside. Just a simple run pass option. He reads that as quickly as anybody and gets the ball out there quickly. It's a keeper on first down. And it's a, or excuse me, on second and short for a first down inside the 45. And, and they'll sprinkle that zone read in. That's not a run pass option. That's a zone read where he's actually reading the defensive end who collapsed down on Ingram. And that's why he pulled it out and kept that. It's an option read. A little bit of everything in this offense. And that's Epps coming back. Tried him a couple times in a deep shot. This time they just take the cushion. And just to put you into the mind of Jim Knowles right now, this is life in the Big 12. I'm willing to give up yards. If, if we keep the ball in front of us as a defense and, and they're moving the ball, but we're going to make them execute in the red zone. That's our goal. Give up the yards. Don't give up the big one and make them execute in the red zone. Duvernay on the edge. They're getting close to the red zone. Another monster night for the senior. 12 targets 11 catches yeah you don't want to ever say oh yeah no problem just move the ball down but but honestly that that's kind of the theory in the big 12 try to keep it in front you got to make tackles you don't want yards after the catch but make them be able to execute 10 11 12 plays and especially when things start getting tighter the closer they get to the end zone Duvernay lost his shoe and has to come out for the moment it's a relief for the pokes secondary he is a powerful man Ingram, reverse, flea flicker. They tricked him and touched his touchdown to Kane Brewer. Longhorns reclaim the lead. Well, the Oklahoma State defense got lost in a big way. Can't not, blame him. <laughs> not expecting Brewer. Right here, kind of delaying, and then eventually sliding down that left sideline, and Rodriguez just lost it. What'd you say, everything in this offense? We saw a lot yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. You saw it all right there. Reverse flea flicker, and the tight end sneaks out. Here's a clinic for you right there. So Texas answers the long march by Oklahoma State. They, they did it quick. 232 to move 75 yards, and it's the Longhorns back in front as the quarterback finds the tight end for his first touchdown reception of the season.
Texas back in front. That was a fun play, Kirk. Yeah, it, it was. Kate Brewer, the, the tight end, he's got to be the happiest guy in the world. They practice that probably every day, and he's thinking, man, coach, one time you got to call that play. And to call it into the boundary, we were talking at the break how quickly the execution of that happens. Uh, luckily, it ends up back in the hands of Ellinger, who can throw the ball and get it out of his hands quickly. Yeah, four guys touch the ball in tight spaces. Brown from the five. Knocked down across the 25. Well, let's take a look where he is. He's kind of in the H. He's going to work out here, just kind of show block, and then just work his way down the sideline. But a lot happens into the boundary. So you're going to hand it off, then you're going to flip it to Smith, and then he's going to flip it back to Ellinger, and then the tight end just sneaks behind Rodriguez, who like it was like an alarm went off in his mind. Wait, who's got him? <laughs> Nobody's back there. And the trick play works for Tom Herman. Ellinger on the drive, five for five. Also ran it twice. Both times it was for a first down. Now Sanders turned to try to answer. The keeper. It's getting very simple, this playbook, because that's been working. Well, at that keep, time. They keep going into that boundary and dealing with the corner blitz. Josh Thompson, who was up into the boundary that time, it's one thing Todd Orlando continues to do to try to help against this run game is get an edge defender with a corner blitz. That time it worked. Wallace to the right on second and 11. They're looking that direction. Fires back across the middle. Stoner got loose. He's got a first down to the 45. There's a flag way back where the quarterback was hit. Oh, yeah. He got Osai got Osai hit him hard and hit him high. Brought his right arm through up near his uh, face mask. Right in front of the referee. They're going to add 15 yards on top of this game. But what vision by Sanders while he's about to get hit to make this gutsy throw. Be the second personal foul on this Texas defense tonight. Trying to rough up the freshman. Sanders came up limping after the play. The trainer's talking to personal him. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. They're targeting. Defense. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the play and an automatic first down. So not just a 15-yard penalty, but perhaps Osai ejected from the game for targeting. Let's watch that component of it. Yeah, he, here is two receivers. He's looking this way, and at the last second, he's able to come back and see Stoner. He's got to throw it quickly before the safety can come over and make a play on the ball. Watch the he, arm. And he takes the hit. The arm up to the head. And, and again, I think the crowd saw it on the board, and they didn't react because it didn't look like it was a big hit. But we have to ask Dave. I think sometimes with an official standing there, it's the intent of watching that, watching the arm come up into the neck area that sometimes draws the attention. Of course, this crew is reviewing it, Dave. Exactly right. Three elements of targeting: forcible contact. He's a defenseless player, so a hit above the shoulders. That hand came into the neck area, so you've got to decide whether it's forcible contact or not. Now, to me, he ex accelerates that arm. Remember. The new rule is replay has to confirm all of those elements before they can take, before they can confirm targeting. Now the question is, on that arm, he hits him high, is that forcible contact? It's a higher standard with the new rule, isn't it? They Absolutely. want to make sure that it was targeting because the stakes are so high. Well, I love the replay aspect of this. It's yeah. this year. I think it's great. In the past, once this was called, it was called. That was it. I football has been moved, excuse me, to the 40-yard line, regardless of what this crew with Jack McDonald, the replay official in charge of it, discussing it with David Alvarez. But obviously, Osai, they have a bye week, but he would missed the first half of the West Virginia game, which is their next game on the road October 5th. After further review, there is no targeting at number 46. He can remain in the game. The rough and the passer has been enforced. First down. Now, the reason that's not targeting is because they decided, and I pretty much agree with them, that that was not forcible contact. It is roughing the passer. Okay. He hit him high. But why they took the targeting off is they decided that was not forcible contact, not enough to confirm it 100%. And, and, it, and the new rule saves Osai from missing 
first half and the rest of this game and first half and next uh, next game in Morgantown. Hubbard dancing around. Good stuff, Dave. I think Sanders would say that felt pretty forcible. The forearms <laughs> on my neck. No doubt. They're gonna go. They're gonna go speedball here. Gonna go fast. Remember, first drive, a lot of runs to the outside. They're, they're, this time they're gonna throw it out there. Wallace trying to make a big play out of a short throw. Got a block from Woods. It's right near the marker. Now they want to get that ball to the outside and let their playmakers and athletes make plays and force these defenders to have to make plays out on the edge. They've got some new bodies that they've had to rotate in there. Third and one, but Hubbard's going to pick that up easily. Feels like Wall. Uh, it feels like Wallace has been quiet here. They've been so focused on running, it just feels like he's due for a shot. I agree. Has four catches, but the damage came early. He's been pretty well covered by two guys since then. First down. Throw it down to Landon Wolf, and not much after the catch, but they move the ball to the 22. And the difference, I think, Chris, with, with Wallace compared to some of their great receivers they've had in Stillwater is they'll move him around to different spots, not just put him in one spot. Makes it tougher to defend him. They've moved him to the right, single coverage out there. They find him, and Wallace able to escape the first tackler. Stepping up to make the play is Brown. It's the first down again. And that's why I think he's different this year. Is with Sanders getting the ball out quickly. Last year it was downfield shots, acrobatic, up in the air, adjusting his body, incredible catches. More, seeing some of that, but also quick throws and letting him do damage after the catch with that quickness and speed. Wallace is so pumped up because he knows with the quarterback's strong arm, the ball is going to get there quickly. He just has to look it in and then make a play. Hubbard stacked up as a long one fought off the blocks and dropped him for a short loss. That was Josh Thompson. Boy, watch the right side of the offense just push Oklahoma State back into the backfield, just throwing people. Those offensive linemen are moving around. That was a corner that came up. Josh Thompson. Sanders fires out of bounds. Not even Wallace could make that acrobatic catch. Stearns in coverage. This sets up a big call for Oklahoma State here. Third and 11. Back inside the red zone where they've had opportunities tonight. Not always able to capitalize and come up with touchdowns. Yep, Amendola has kicked three field goals and unless they can create a first down here maybe called on again keeper again Sanders makes a man miss time out for a first down so electric on the edge keep in mind you got Caden Stearns one of the top safeties in the Big 12 right there in the open field to make a play they marked him a little short right there he sidesteps him and goes out at about the three yard line they spot him at the four they might want to take a look at this for the spot exactly because right now the ball is spotted short it'll be four down it's marked at the four yard line i thought he got to the three of course it's where the football is when it crosses sure. out, out of bounds on the sideline so right there I think the spot's pretty good. The ball going out of bounds. Well, his feet were still in bounds. The ball can go over the out of bounds line while he's still in bounds. Now he's out of bounds. See, that's a three yard line mark to me. He's in bounds. He's not out of bounds. So right now he's out of bounds. There he goes out. Right. That's, th that's, that's inside the three yard line, possibly. It's a they full yard closer than where they have it spotted. So why Jack McDonald reviews this play. We'll take a break. Still taking a look at this. It's a difference between first and goal or fourth and one. Yeah, the, the ball is marked just inside the four yard line. And, I, and the first down marker to me looks like about the three, maybe two and a half to three yard line. I mean, this, this is going to be very close, close enough for Mike Gundy to think about going for it regardless but the stakes are very high here and it does not look like they've improved the spot so it's going to stand with the ball at the four yard line and it's fourth down well the official still wait a second they're still looking at it yeah, he's Cowboys are up run, run, ready to run a fourth down play yeah Mike Gunny's oh 
Mike Gunny just tipped his hand and pretty much letting you know he's ready to go for it. He might think that was gamesmanship, or, or did he not? I mean, Jack McDonald is talking to Alvarez about 75, 80 yards away from where the players are. Okay, he's still. I mean, to me, to me, Dave, that's just inside the three-yard line. Remember, it's where he crosses the sideline. Right, where the ball is. Exactly. If it, if this, it's it's even before that step is down. Yeah, it's not, it's not where the foot lands. Exactly. It's where his body goes out of bounds. Where is the football? I agree with you that it's not it's not a great spot that they should right. move it closer, but it's it's. I think every every foot counts in this spot. So yeah, right especially in a 28-23 game. So here, his body is out of bounds. And where is the football? I, I still think it's closer to the three than the four. Yeah, for sure. Remember, they have to be 100% sure to change the spot that's, on the field. It's so hard to change. This is a difficult one. These, these Wish you were in there, Dave, feeling that heat. <laughs> that replay boost. <laughs> Thank you. I like it up here in this heat. I appreciate After it. further review, the ruling on the field stands. Interesting. The start of the line again. So they did not see enough there. Try triangulate those two angles to change well, the spot. Gundy's going to go anyway. Mike Gundy already let his crew know what they were going to do. Quarterback sneak here and have that, that fullback behind him help push. I like that play because it's not illegal anymore. He's let this quarterback sneak it and then let that big fullback tight end, State Metcalf, just push through behind the quarterback and get him across the line. Oh, nope, they hand it to Auburn. He's not going to get there. Texas makes a stand. And that spot proves huge as the Longhorns protect a five point lead. Watch the right side of the offensive line get imploded. They, they just get blown up and pushed into the backfield. Over here, watch the push. Trying to pull the left guard keys around. He's got nowhere to go because of Roach and the rest of that defense getting into the backfield. Hubbard had nowhere to go. So that Texas defensive line, look at 32 Roach mm. pushing his way into that backfield. He pushed two linemen. He did. Roach, the senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's the vocal leader. I said, who's the biggest voice on defense? He said, I am. He's not made a big play. Not bashful at all to tell you that. No. Well, he's bounced around as a defensive tackle, defensive end, outside linebacker. He's up to 290. They say in the NFL, he'll be an inside guy and a dominant player. So once again, Cowboys don't find the end zone from the red zone. And now Texas. Gets Ingram loose, and he shows his strength and moves the six out across the 15. Boy, he has such patience there. Let that play develop. Eventually finds just a small crease and works his way through that left side. It's nice for Texas, backed up inside your own five, to be able to rely on an offensive line and a really talented running back. Stiff arm, sheds a tackle, and a quick burst. Texas getting chucked, no longer backed up in their own end deep. Just watch the patience and the vision of Ingram. He's waiting for these linemen to determine it. The crease could be here, or he may have to bounce it. He's just waiting to see. There's the lateral jump and quickness in the stiff arm. Beautiful. Game 26 yards in the first two carries. This time, Rodarius Williams comes around the corner to stop Ingram. Jim Knowles trying to fire a few blitzes, and he's going to have to. He's, if he doesn't fire a few of those blitzes, that time it was a corner blitz. Williams who made the tackle. Those three down linemen are just getting pushed around by the Texas offensive line. Tough to slow down Ingram and company with just those three down linemen. Roshan Johnson spelling Ingram. Ellinger takes off. And he'll run into traffic and pick up just two. It'll be third and long now. Clock winding inside of a minute in the third quarter. Story often tonight has been Texas gets a touchdown. Oklahoma State kicks a field goal. That's been the case in this quarter. But an interesting fourth quarter coming up. 
Texas on third down tonight. Seven of ten. Usually they've looked for Devin DuVernay. Slot right this time. And Ellinger looking across the middle. Deflected and intercepted. Fargo Peel. And that's the first interception of Sam Ellinger in 161 attempts. Wow. The interception is made by Harville Peel, the safety, but Radarius Williams, the corner, makes the play. Anticipating a crossing route, watch him undercut it and get a hand on the football right there. Almost comes up with a pick, but knocks it up into the air into the waiting arms of Harvey Peel. There's a good look at him right there at the top. Knows it's third down and eight. Expecting it, cuts underneath. That's textbook. That's 30 starts and expecting and anticipating a crossing route on third and eight. Great play. Kind of mistake that Ellinger has not made yet this season. And now Hubbard off and running. Still energized, even though that's his 29th carry tonight. We're still in the third quarter. <laughs> I think he may be heading to 40 tonight. They said they didn't want to do that, but that has once again been bulk of the game plan. Feed number 30. Texas player is down. Sanders wanted to run one more play before the end of the quarter, but they will not have the chance to do that now. So again, Ellinger coming in, 139 attempts without a pick. That was the second longest streak in FBS after Justin Herbert of Oregon. Playing Stanford tonight. Pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah. He had a streak of what was it? 308 without a pick last year. And by the way, that, that that's a pick, but it's a heck of a play by a corner undercutting an accurate throw, right? It, it wasn't Big just time. what are you thinking? It was great play, deflection, balls accurately thrown, goes up in the air, and and the safety makes an interception on it. He's got tremendous trust in his own accuracy, and you can understand that. That was a pretty tight window to try to yeah. fit the ball in, though. And Williams, his 29th start, crafty veteran, got the hand up. I was gonna say for young corners and young defensive backs, knowing down and distance can tip you to what route that receiver might be running. That's Williams doing his homework. It'll come down to the fourth quarter. Texas up five, Oklahoma State threatening. Back to Austin after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson back tomorrow night on every Sunday at 7.30 Eastern, NFL prime time. Fourth quarter here, and Oklahoma State threatening to reclaim the lead. The red zone has been an issue, though. On second and short, Sanders rolls and fires into heavy traffic. Dangerous throw because Brandon Jones was in the area and he broke it up. Again, late with the football and with his legs, easy first down. Avoid this third down and short. When Jones, a veteran, comes around, able to make a play. But what you couldn't see there is if, if he wanted it, Sanders able to easily pick up that first down. Hubbard again on short yardage is not going to get there and it's fourth down and now you really go back to that second down play where he could have taken off and, and run and again we're talking about a freshman that's had a big night he just tells you the little areas that he'll continue to grow and continue to make better decisions avoid that third and short which would then avoid this fourth down and short here come the big bodies they have been getting beat up front this oklahoma state offensive line if they're going to win this game it's time to change that they're going to bring a field goal team. I Amandola, with the clock winding down, trotted out late for a 39 yard. Mark Gundy, you're always aware of the fake. Well, they didn't get it off in time. They, they didn't get it off in time. So unless they called a timeout, I didn't see a signal on the far side. The play clock had wound down. Delay game. Yeah. Offense. Five it was sort of a late a decision down. to trot Amendola out. I was surprised that I he was going to kick the field goal. I was too. down five. It shows you how he didn't feel good about the big guys up front. But now, well, I, you got to kick the field goal. Of course. And, I, and I, again, I, we're just starting the fourth quarter. I think he thinks this game's a long way from being over. The way these two offenses can score, he's thinking, let, let, let's try to get the three points and get a little bit closer. 
Penalty moves it to a 44-yard field goal attempt. And it is a fake. And it's pitched into heavy traffic. And Texas was not moved. And they stop it. Again, I, I said, oh, my God, you just yep. never know, right? But after the delay of game, you're thinking, oh, they, they're going to probably kick it. Now, they tried to throw this to Woods, the big tight end, and there was such penetration, it never had a chance. Here he is right here. But watch, look at Texas. They were expecting it. In fact, Chris Brown, 15, had his arms wrapped around the big tight end, thinking that he might get the football. That play never had a chance. They were Incomplete. not fooled at all. They were thinking what you were thinking. This is Mike Gundy. We're not buying the field goal attempt down five. Empty possession for Oklahoma State. Texas back on offense up five. Beautiful scene from the blimp as Don't Stop Believing my journey has played. Remember when cell phones didn't have flashlights? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you couldn't read a menu Remember in a dark restaurant? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So the incomplete shovel pass on the fake field goal, and Texas takes over at the 27. And Ellinger is thinking about throwing. And why not to Duvernay as they quickly move the sticks to the 44. Nice job of reading the safety coming up. And when he came up, again, Ellinger, who has answers to every question, has a quick answer and a quick throw there on the RPO. 100-yard night for Duvernay on 12 catches now. And he beat Ingram for a first down game. How do you stop Duvernay if you're a defense in this league? Look, you, look at what he's put on tape now. You, you got to have a guy that can play in space and is built similarly and has the kind of attributes physically that he has because in this scheme, you can't put two guys on him. It'll make you pay for it in other areas. Ingram bangs for a first down. So find a fast guy who can squat 600 yeah. and put him on. That's yeah. all you got to do. That's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Good luck with that. Man, he's been fun to watch in such a different aspect of their offense with him at the slot. Because he, you know about his burst and how quick he is, but with the low center of gravity, you mentioned 600 pound squatter, he breaks through a lot of tackles yeah. and then has the quickness to take it to the distance, take it to the house. Ingram over 100 yards in that last carry. Now Ellinger takes his shot for the end zone. Jump ball incomplete. There's a flag down in the secondary. A.J. Green was in coverage. Well, they threw it right at Green, who was one-on-one, -on -one and looked like he might have used his left arm to grab the jersey to catch up to Epps. That time they used Duvernay as a decoy, kind of a pump fake out in the flat, and then went downfield to the bigger Malcolm Epps at 6-6. Epps did not have a long, it is a penalty against Part the, the Cowboys. Holding defense, number four, 10 yard penalty and an automatic. John Green they did not have a, a big completion this year to Epps. They tried to hit him on three deep shots tonight. Yeah. They haven't completed one, but yeah. at least drew the flag. Yeah, that, that's, that's what you see right there. He, Epps had a chance to look like he was going to go by him, and Green doing anything he can to stop him. First down now at the 34. time and puts it short flag down as Ingram makes the catch and spins into the secondary still running still running down to the seven now we'll have to check the flag on the far side of the field in the defensive backfield Boy, they, they man is he that. elusive oh he is that yeah. spin move was pretty. That, how about just a check down and then putting it into his hands and he gets all those yards out, a simple check down. It's going to stand the penalty against Oklahoma State. 100-yard rushing. We've seen what a dangerous receiver he has been really throughout the entire month. He's trying to catch his breath over there on a hot night. 26-yard gain for number 26. Personal foul, face mask. Defense four half the distance from the end of the play, first down. So that'll march it inside the five. Texas up five, first and goal. How about going back to the second and one, the third and one, the fourth and one, the delay, the fake field goal. Texas gets the ball back. See the face mask up at the top, right there. Grabs on the Eagles. But missed opportunity by Oklahoma State. Ellinger in Texas gets the ball and trying to really. 
create some separation. Ellinger still got it. Dancing around, and he'll just lower the shoulder. Tried to get cute early to say, you know what, I'm just going to try to power my way in, and he got close. Well, I, I, what I like to see is the power running and the way he does, he lowers that shoulder. I mean, as a defender, you're thinking, here comes the quarterback, right? Well, not this quarterback. It's more like here comes the fullback when he pulls it down in this area. You didn't love the fullback label because he's a great thrower, but he oh, does yeah. run like a fullback I, I, in short yardage. Right. It's like a Tim Tebow type of runner down here. We take that compliment. Yeah, he should. Roshan Johnson is the back to his right. And he's got it, and he scores. Texas stretching the lead. Up 11, they'll go for two. Another long Texas march, and they are finding the end zone when they get into the red zone. The pokes are not very often. That's exactly right. Three for three. And that, again, it, it, that's an area that's a strength because of the quarterback and because of this system that they run. They've had two touchdowns outside the red zone. As you said, they're three for three in the red zone. And Oklahoma State, a couple field goals, turned over on downs. They were just short of the red zone for that last fourth down stop on the big field goal. Bunch to the right, empty backfield for the two-point conversion. Ellinger zips it out. Gets made by Johnson. Fighting. And he's in the end zone as a flag comes in again. There's a flag where all those blockers were bunched up with defenders. So let's check that first. Probably, probably a face mask there on the tackle. How good is Johnson? Quarterback that moves over to play running back. Now he's catching the ball out here. Picks up a few blocks. The point is good. There's the face mask Crystal right there. Foul, face mask, defense number 14. That will be enforced on the kickoff. Like I said, kid, Chris, this is not just a cute story. This kid's a backup quarterback, freshman, and now is a running back and provides playmaking ability and a spark to this offense. Just incredibly unselfish. Here he is again. Hadn't played running back since the fifth grade. Looks so natural. Scores the touchdown, adds the two pointer. The lead is 13. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Wells Fargo. This is a commitment to better banking. This is Wells Fargo. And in part by Pacific Life, 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Touchdown after they snuffed out the big field goal attempt. Gives Texas their biggest lead of the night. 13 points early fourth quarter. A personal foul on the two-point conversion makes it easy for Dicker to reach the stands with that kickoff. Hell State bus, Curtis Wilson here in Austin, keeping us up to date with what's going on on a busy weekend. Kirk, what is the mayhem moment you selected by Hell State this week? Well, there are a bunch of different mayhem moments, but the game in Madison to me was mayhem for both teams. Michigan, two weeks to get ready. All the talk about Jim Harbaugh and his offense and Josh Gaddis. This will be the week we learn out how good they could be. It couldn't have been any worse. So that's the mayhem for them. And the Badgers couldn't look any better. Late pitch to Hubbard. Wallace, was he down before he pitched it? Hubbard was waiting for, like, almost that was planned. And he almost broke free. Yeah. I wonder, Sean Jamison stopped him. I wonder if the knee was down before he flipped it out. I think that's what they're going to take a look at. Oh, that left knee. Texas defender being looked at by the athletic yeah. trainers. It's Jamison. He's down. Yeah. I think that the crew will buzz down, see that, and they'll spot the ball there. It's interesting because Hubbard is so dangerous, and he accelerated quickly. Jamison was alert to tackle him. And Jamison, who has had to come into this game tonight and play a lot of minutes with some of the injuries to the secondary, hopefully he's okay. Boy, Tom Herman's got him. He's starting to look back at the bench like who do I have left Jamison oh, also oh. is a special teams play at a kickoff return for a touchdown against Rice it's another look for Jack McDonald who's been kind of busy in the second half in the replay booth yeah. 
ball in the hand, knee on the ground. It seems pretty straightforward, Dave. I agree. Remember, anything other than the hand or foot, that knee's down. He is pushing the ball forward, but he still has control of it. Hasn't released it yet. Yeah, he's, it, they'll mark him down. I think, if anything, they're just trying to make sure they have the proper spot of where the ball should be. Kirk, I would agree with that. I mean, to me, he's clearly down right there. I think, it, it, and, and that's about the 23 or 24 yard line, which would actually be a loss of a yard or two. Interesting, because they had Hubbard and Wallace, the two dynamic playmakers who talked about all night, both standing right there. Yeah. As though they, that was almost planned, like the late kind of option pitch, like the Sooners used to do back in the day when oh, Jamel yeah. Holloway. Yeah. I love that, the downfield pitch. How much fun was that? Oh. Jamel Holloway, Charles Thompson, 30 yards downfield, just for fun, <laughs> just flip one. Now the Buffaloes with Darian Hagen, oh. they, they could do that too oh, a couple could. times. Cordell Stewart. Those were so much fun, the years of those offenses. You wonder with this Oklahoma State offense now. After further review, the runner's knee was down at the 24-yard line. It will be second down. They're explosive. They got big playmakers. But now, Kirk, down 13. You just really feel increased urgency to make something yeah. happen quickly. Yeah, but I, I, I think they they kind of stick to who they are, which is the ability to hit, hit at any moment with a big play. But I think you continue to run the ball and... You know, you got to stay, try to stay ahead of the sticks. That was a loss now of one instead of a positive game. But Wallace will move around. He's now in the slot right here. It's a backup defensive back. So in the game for Texas, Sanders scrambling, directing his blockers. He'll take a hit rather than go out of bounds. It's short of the marker. Jeff McCullough yeah. doesn't stop. He tells Hubbard, I got the speed to get around this guy. You got to work up field. Help me out a little bit. He was not darting out of bounds at all. So third and short, Hubbard will eventually get knocked down for first down yard. He's trying to get around the edge. Brandon Jones wasn't having it. It's just enough for a first down. That's 31 carries on a night, averaging under three yards a carry. If you would have told Todd Orlando, you're going to hold Hubbard to under three yards a carry, he'd be pretty happy. Averaging almost eight per carry. Now Sanders, can he escape this? Yes, he can! Still running the short game, but it should have been a big loss. Stearns finally got him. Yeah, the late blitz ends up getting home, but just unable to bring him down. He shows you how elusive he can be. Watch Osai get in there. Right there, he's got him. In fact, a few other guys all get their hands on him. Can't bring him down. Stoner with a catch on the edge. He gets a nice block, delivers a blow rather than takes it. That was Stearns. They've collided a couple times tonight. Oklahoma State cranking up this tempo, trying to wear this Texas defense down. That's 71 plays still with 10 minutes to go in this fourth quarter that this Texas defense has had to defend. Bobble snap and a flag whistle before the play. That's, that's part of the problem with the hurry up is the center and the quarterback miscommunicate. The center fired the ball back and Sanders wasn't even expecting the football. And the only thing that stopped the play was they weren't in position they weren't lined up so it's a, a motion call false start offense all 11 players never got set five yard penalty still first down and if they're set that's a free ball I and mean, that's a fumble it's a byproduct of tempo haven't been too many penalties tonight see wolf he's he's still trying to get we even stoner he's 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 kind of that, that was just a, a cfl style <laughs> right. receiver still right, moving around right. over there so another new wrinkle <laughs> these guys are adding first and 15 now Sanders fires in the traffic, jump ball incomplete. Wallace was trying to beat two guys, Boyce and Stearns. Well, that's been, that that's been the that's been story of the night for Wallace. I mean, he's got a he has a reputation of making those circus catches. We got another Texas player down. This time it looks like Stearns, the safety. Man. As you said, the wear and tear. These guys have delivered some shots. And he going to stay down on that sideline. Sophomore safety, co-leader in tackles in this defense. Scorching hot night in Texas. It's Goodyear provides the aerial coverage from end zone to end zone. Goodyear, more driven. Cowboys involved their 43. 
Aiden Stearns helped off, joining Jalen Green as Texas starting DBs out of the game at the moment. It did not look like Stern was likely to return. We'll get more information from Maria if you can. Chuba Hubbard churning and driving will be third down and about nine now. Brendan Jones, the, the one starter in that secondary who's played a lot of football, 19. He's got to help a lot of youth and a lot of inexperience back there. They're misaligned on this play. Sanders' ball comes out awkwardly, intercepted. He was hit as he threw the football. And Chris Brown makes the pick. There is a flag down near where the offensive line was. Watch Coburn right here. Use, he's known for his size at 340 pounds, but he does a good job of getting the pressure on Sanders that forced the ball to go up into the air. And then Brown comes up with the interceptions. The big fella. After further discussion, the contact in question was legal. First down, Texas. So there's no penalty there tacked on after the return by Chris Brown. First pick of the year. Yeah, and wa watch how quick he is. 340 pounds, little stunt move, works over the guard, and it gets his hand right up into that throwing area of Sanders, and that's what put the ball up into the air, and the athletic Chris Brown makes the play. Second interception by Sanders, who had one total in the first three games. So Texas in plus territory, up 13. That's one way to help some inexperience and youth in that secondary. Sure. Get a good pass rush. Ingram, 18th carry tonight, adding to his 100-yard evening. It's about a yard and a half. As Tom Herman this week when we talked with him about complimentary football, I said as an offensive coordinator over your career, you know, he was an offensive coordinator at Ohio State when they won the national title with Urban in 14. I said, you didn't really think about complimentary football. You're thinking about scoring. I said, as a head coach, it's a different deal. When you were in Houston and now in Texas, he said, you know, the longer I'm a head coach, the more I'm, I'm obviously aware of calling the game and helping the defense. And this is an example of that. Instead of just trying to score pass, maybe trying to work a little bit of clock and being smart. Exactly. They do that this time. Ellinger, high percentage pass to Smith and Jake Smith down near the marker at the 38. Abundamiga stopped him. It is a first down. Especially in this conference where there are a lot of games that go back and forth, back and forth in potential shootouts. It's, it's nice to have an offense that once in a while can slow it down and, and work a little clock especially with the banged up defense tonight. They spotted the ball back, so it is not quite first down yardage. You need a yard, less than a yard on third down. And they can run the play clock down again. Yep, smart. Empty backfield. Comes the big Throw it out of there, run the quarterback. Run the big fella. Yep. But Oklahoma State was ready for it. Malcolm Rodriguez had an active evening. He got Ellinger two yards behind the line. Now it's fourth down from the 40, so kind of an awkward down and distance situation. Yeah, yeah it really is. Brock Martin shot through there as well and, and made it easier for Rodriguez, but a very nice job by Jim Knowles and the Oklahoma State defense. After the interception, they get a three and out to still keep their hopes alive of trying to come back into this football game. Krzyzewski ends a punt from the 39. Yeah, if the Cowboys come back and, and make this a nail-biter, remember that stand right there. Never let Ellinger get going. It's a low snap. Krzyzewski had to go down and scoop it. Gets the punt off, and Stoner makes the fair catch at the 11-yard line. So 7.22 to play. Down by 13. 89 yards from the end zone. Texas where the Texas defense is having to gut out a win right now three starters so far in this game have gone down I was told that Jalen Green is out for the rest of the game with the shoulder Josh Thompson out for the rest of the game It is a foot injury Caden Stearns He's going from the tent back into the locker room to get that knee checked on and will likely not be returning to this game guys And already BJ Foster and Overshone out as well coming into tonight Good guys like Anthony Cook sophomore stepping up Montrell Estelle Chris Adamora is a true freshman. I don't think he's seen much action this year. He's on the field right now. Yeah. And even more reason to make sure you're doubling Wallace 
and take your chances with other receivers. Sanders again hit as he threw. The arm didn't come out clean. The pressure that time was from Graham. Yeah, and, and sometimes just touching the quarterback. There's a look at Stearns. You just heard Maria saying he's done for the night and heading into the locker room. We wish him all the best. He really talented player last year as a freshman played a lot of football and a leader in that back end as a as a safety in his year two. Sanders diving attempt, but it's just off the fingertips of Stoner. This is the Big 12 opener, and they do have a bye week next week if that helps. But man, you're just beginning yeah. the gauntlet of skill you got to face in this league to be down two or three starters in the secondary is yeah. a serious bummer. Even if Texas can come out with a victory, absolutely, and use that bye week to get get ready, and then you hope you go to Morgantown. It's always tough to get on the road, but you go to Morgantown and hope that you're able to maybe give those players an extra week to to try to recover and come back and try to get ready for OU. The punter Hutton in his end zone. Jones who's had a great night at safety is up as a returner but this is a very short kick which is bouncing around at a touch a Texas player. A couple guys were there it right. bounced backwards into right. a couple of guys and right. unclear who it touched but Texas has recovered anyway. It, is Texas yeah, it, it definitely hit a Texas player. Byron Bonds, the linebacker, did recover it. Here's our Pacific Life game summary. You see the quarterback comparison here. Ellinger did throw the interception, but four touchdown passes. Sanders has been an effective runner as well, but does have those two interceptions. And Texas forcing the three and out. Taking over in plus territory, looking to just bleed out more of this clock and snap this five game home losing streak against Oklahoma State. And for the seniors, get their first win in their careers against the Cowboys. Remember, very conservative approach by Ellinger in this last series. Sean Johnson cradles the ball in two arms and gets two yards. They were working that play clock and just content. The 13 point lead to, to, to have that approach, which obviously makes a lot of sense. In Texas, this would be very satisfying on a number of levels. The offense, again, played well. The defense has risen up after halftime, and that had been the problem, allowing just a field goal after the break. Big fourth down stop, and then the fake field goal, shovel pass snuffed out. Ellinger batted down, threw it right into the arms of Kevin Henry, the linebacker. Well, it's, it's a nice play by Henry, who, who just does times it up perfectly. And not only is he able to knock it down, but he stops the clock. Tried for Duvernay one more time on that slant. Ingram back in the game. Can run the play clock down. Need eight on third down. Ingram. Stutter steps, fights, but comes up three yards short. It's Henry, and it's fourth down. Lost the shoe again. So Texas has tilted the field and playing in this end yeah. lately to see if they put it down there again. Yeah, and, and again, Tom Herman, we just talked about complimentary football and, and playing smart. Of course, he'd love to just keep scoring. The offensive coordinator in him would love to just keep firing away and coming up with points with his, with his talented offense. But instead, he's very wise, works that clock, trying to get out of here with a win. Looks like they'll let it run down and, and spend a timeout. You know, they just about take the five yard penalty and Probably take the, the punter more room. Herman's an interesting story. He's, he's, he's 43 years old, but he was 30. He was on a staff that got fired at Sam Houston State. He really felt like this this profession isn't for me. His wife was doing the supporting of the family. Imagine that, though, 13 years later, he was given a chance in the place back where he was a GA under Mac Brown, a graduate assistant. And came back to Texas only as the head coach. Never forget when Urban Meyer became the head coach at Ohio State and he started to put his staff together and everybody wanted to know 
who's Urban Meyer going to hire as his defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator? And he announced Tom Herman out of Iowa State, and everybody thought, huh? Tom Ur Herman at Iowa Urban State? Urban Meyer was like the rest of us. They were start. watching that game. Offense, Offense number one, five-yard penalty. When Iowa State shot Oklahoma State, yeah. Cowboys were in contention for the yeah. BCS title game. Iowa State pulls the upset on a Friday night. Urban Meyer's watching that game watching how that Iowa State sure. offense was manufacturing things. He's yeah. that guy. Yeah. And that was what drew his attention that initially amazing. Yeah. to Herman. It was that the Pokes played a role in that. And, and yeah, and, and think about, you know, you become the offensive coordinator at Ohio State with Urban Meyer, and then you win a national championship in 2014, and the next day you're flying to Houston to become the head coach of the Houston Cougars. Kirk gets made at the nine. X3R for Teachers Week, an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that honors great teachers, including a teacher of Malcolm Roach in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He still cares deeply about her. I just want to say uh, thank you to Ms. Mack, you know, my teacher when I was in 10th grade environmental science, uh, just off of always being there for me, uh, you know, being an example for me, somebody I could follow when I was going through things. Uh, she was always there, somebody I needed to talk to. And I also want to wish her a happy birthday. Her birthday was yesterday, so happy birthday, Ms. Mack. Well done, Malcolm. Extra Yard for teachers. Follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. Texas spending a timeout on defense here. As home State goes to work from the 10. Exactly five minutes to play. American Red Cross, helping people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support the Red Cross preparation. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate. Red Cross will also be mobilizing to southeast Texas in the city of Houston, which was impacted by Hurricane Melda just this week. Hubbard, they run it down 13, a long way from the end zone. Open, he can just bust a real long one. Well, under five minutes to go. You're down 13, but the way these offenses score in this conference, <laughs> if you're Todd Orlando, man, with all these new faces in the secondary, you're holding on. And there's a run. Sanders takes off. We get a first down. You'd think maybe they'd want to attack the secondary, which is so difficult. Well, but, but, man, they're keeping everybody back. They're just trying to keep Wallace, Stoner, and everybody in front of them. But they've got to try to come up with a way to hit a crease. Hubbard, man, he's going to get 100 yards tonight, but he's really had to earn it. Yeah. 35 carries now for 104, three yards a pop. That's it. Yeah, a great effort. Texas wanted to come in and take him out and make Sanders throw to win. Right now, Sanders needs to make a big play. And he's looking downfield, and he launches one in the double coverage, and no flag. You know, Two defenders on Wallace. That, to me, that's an example where McCray could do a better job of working back to the ball, really selling it, and, and showing him work back to the football. Ball's a little underthrown. Work, throw yourself back into the body of the defender, and you might get a call there. It was McCray who had drawn the attention of two backup Texas defenders. Third and six. And the motion Wallace to the left side. Sanders was looking that direction, has time, fires, and had a man running wide open underneath. That was C.J. Moore overshot him fourth down. Yeah, got pressured again. You and I are seeing the same thing, and I think that pressure took that throw away, Chris, because Moore, the freshman, was wide open, but closing in on him was Bimage right into his face as he was trying to release the football, and I think that caused him to not be able to come down and follow through, and the ball sailed on him. Last gasp for the folks here. Need six on fourth down, and now a flag and a false start, so now it's going to be fourth and 11. False start. Offense, number 50, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. They were rightfully pleased with their offensive line play in the first three games, but this a much stiffer test, tougher competition on the road, and I don't think they'll be super pleased with the guys up front in this game. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not in Corvallis or Tulsa. I mean, this, is a, this is a totally different test, and you got to give Texas' defensive line a lot of credit for the way they have played. Being able to keep a safety back to help against Wallace required that front playing incredibly well, and they sure did that. 
tonight against the run. And now after the penalty, they bring out the punter, Tom Hutton. He boots it very high and short, and an idiotic play. I gotta say it, there's just no other reason. Brandon Jones went sliding in to make the catch, and at second time, it's been muffed tonight. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I, ca I can't believe this. It's a veteran, too, because Smith, the freshman, makes a mistake, and you think, well, it, it's a freshman that makes a mistake, and this time, it's a veteran, a senior, and Brandon Jones sliding, just trying to make that play before the ball could have a chance to bounce, which at this point in the game is irrelevant. And Tom Herman is going to have some things to work on in the special teams when he gets his team together on Sunday or Monday. Sivarin recovered the second muff for a Longhorn punt return tonight, and the folks have life now. They're in the Texas end of the 46. Hubbard. Still running hard, showing that endurance. And, and if you're thinking, why do they can keep running Hubbard? If you're looking at the clock, the clock's working its way down. You know, they're I'm taking, that. I, I am too <laughs> at this point. That wasn't before. It was about seven or eight minutes to go. But now he's got to he's got to find a vertical crease. And another fumbled snap and a whistle and a flag before it. Yeah, the left tackle may have saved them a fumble. With the movement. Snap infraction. Offense, five yard penalty. Still second down. Sanders got to be careful. He picked up the flag and kind of flung it behind him, which is usually a no no. They they didn't penalize him for it. Well, that, that, that ball snapped for whatever reason, as if the center, the quarterback was under the center. Oklahoma State, because the left tackle just moved a fraction before the snap, this ends up being a dead ball. Boy, this is a cleanly played first half of the Cowboys, Kirk. All eight of their penalties have been after halftime. Clock running again. Sanders, again, protection breaks down. He has to flip it underneath. And battling with Hubbard. Chris Adamore, the true freshman, stopped him. It's one of those where you'd like to see maybe Hubbard just get to the sideline, right? Get out of bounds and, and kill that clock. Slow it down anyway as opposed to cutting back in to the inside. Well, they're still trying to get set up. Clock's still running. Wallace is to the right. And he's by himself, one-on-one -on -one in coverage. Sanders looking underneath, and the catch is made by Woods. Big tight end does get out of bounds. Flag comes in and late. Got a clip. They got a, they got a clip on Oklahoma State. Boy, oh boy. I think they got Landon Wolf blocking the back. First down. He's trying to help. It's a hustle play, which you appreciate, but just, 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 he's hit him in the back. Personal foul, blindside block, offense, number one. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still third down. Yeah, new emphasis. They're trying to protect players who are running and get blindsided. That wasn't the most egregious example of it, but well, he's a mental clearly, mistake. Yeah, clearly in the back. And by the way, it didn't affect the play at all. And the tight end was getting out of bounds and cost him 15 yards. That yep, makes it third down. Back at the third 45. From the pocket, Sanders was looking to throw downfield. Escapes, tries to make it happen with his feet. Shows his burst, still running. Cutting back. Sanders. Stiff arm finally wrestled down inside the 15 electric runner. You know, if nothing else, if you're an Oklahoma State fan, you've got a quarterback for the next three years after this year. I mean, you have a big time playmaker who can do all the running and the throwing, but showing you the heart of a fighter. Got 33 yards, now surveys the end zone, has all day to throw, finally laid pressure, and he just has to fling it out of bounds. They have all three timeouts. A minute 50. You score here conceivably. Oh, yeah. Don't even worry about the onside kick. You can use those timeouts, kick it deep, but first things Got, first. Yeah, first thing ever. They've been in the red zone all night tonight, and even close to the red zone at times, and have struggled to be able to come away with points five times down inside to 20, only two touchdowns. Sanders for the end zone. Broken up beautifully. Landon Wolf was streaking there, but Chris Adamora. A freshman pressed into service you, because of the injuries made that play. Are you kidding me? Adam Mora goes airborne. Wolf's behind him. 
Adam Morat doesn't play a lot of football, but the instincts to be able to get back just enough in coverage and knock that ball away. That's great preparation there. Good play. It's like about a baptism. If he's gotten snaps, it's in mop-up time. Now he's in there against Wallace and these receivers trying to protect the lead. That's why you always listen in meetings. Never know when you're going to have your chance, right? Third and ten. They run. Hubbard left. Texas strings it out, but he turns the corner. Tight ropes and scores. Oklahoma State carves into the lead. 137 a play. Boy, great suddenness and quickness by Chubbard. And how about the block by 17? Off to your left. Watch that block. Gives him that corner. Picks up another block right there by McCray. And with the speed, he gets to the end zone for the touchdown. The progressive pylon cam just to make sure. Love those wide receivers blocking, man. Love to see that downfield. And the 37th carry for the workhorse. We had 32 a week ago, and they said, we hope we never have to run him 32 times. Guess what? A busier night. Hasn't really broken a big game, but has reached the end zone for the second time. And the PAT makes it a six-point game. Folks have all three timeouts to use. For the kickoff, we'll check in with Cassidy Hubbard. one in Champaign and of course the Huskers hosting Ohio State on our Saturday Night Football telecast from Lincoln next week. Cassidy has the four wrap-up show after the game. What do you think coach? You, you kick it away, use your timeouts rather than try the onside kick? Here? Well, I, do you trust your defense against Ellinger? Do you trust them to be able to, even though they're going to run it three times and make you burn those timeouts? You got Tylen Wallace by the way. He's on the field here. He's to the far right at the, the bottom. Kicker. I don't know. I don't know if you can trust your defense to definitively say they're going to get off the field to use our three timeouts. Texas is defending this as though it's an onside kick. Yeah. Nobody closer Wallace. to the goal line than the 38 yard line. Wallace all the way at the bottom, as he said. Texas has spotted him. Kick comes the other way. Side spin. It's loose. Still bouncing around. And the Longhorns have recovered it. And it's Adam Mora, the freshman DB, who makes another big play. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How about when he came over to the stadium today? What's he thinking about? I mean, is he thinking he's going to be on, these, on the field for these kind of plays? Ball's in the air, by the way. Right there. Oklahoma State, two players have their hands on it. And it just happened to land in his hands. He's off the face mask. Right. Whatever it takes, right? That ball was bouncing all over the place. You make a great point. I mean, you just never know in this sport. You got to pay attention to the meetings. You got to pay attention to work hard in practice because you just never know when you're going to be forced to make two potentially game saving plays yeah. in the fourth quarter. All right, now here you go. Minute 34, all three timeouts remaining. Now, this Oklahoma State defense has got to make plays, assume the run is obviously coming, and attack the line of scrimmage. Of course, the last time I was in this statement, I said, assume the run. Joe Burrow threw a touchdown pass. So you never know. Folks are crowding the line. Ingram's got it, and he's got nowhere to go. So they stop him right there, and they'll use the first time out. Abunga Miga made the tackle. This week's rankings brought to you by Allstate, the AP poll. Georgia has now stretched their lead to 13 between the hedges against Notre Dame. So looks like they're going to escape hard fought win about five minutes to play. Yep. Notre Dame competing in Athens. But Tennessee, now you live in the state of Tennessee. Yeah, it's not. They weren't expected to win, but 34 yeah. 3. I thought that'd be competitive. How about LSU and Joe Burrow? I'm telling you, man, you better look out. This is not your same old LSU. This is a LSC six from the board. No, it's not. Oh, but I'm mean, every week. They just keep going to a different level. I cannot wait. Defense good enough. Every year it's LSU and Alabama. We get excited about. I don't. Is Alabama's defense good enough? They're playing a lot of freshmen. I don't know. That could be. Imagine that game being a shootout. LSU and Alabama could be with those two quarterbacks. Yeah, forget the nine six affair. No, we've come a long way from that. Second and nine. Once again, it's Selling no out. games. It's all about just making Gundy burn his timeouts still got one yeah I mean you're gonna get the ball back with a minute right now is when you you want to start working 
with your, your freshman quarterback going over certain aspects. Remember what Todd Orlando said, and this is the defensive coordinator of this conference, is watch these games go back and forth. It's like the NBA, folks. Things are going to happen during the game, big runs, momentum changes, but somehow it always comes down to this, last couple of possessions. That's why when I was 36-23, you're thinking, oh, you know, Texas, they're working the clock a little bit. They're smart working the clock because they know at any second Oklahoma's take and hit them and now you now it's a one possession game they're going to get the ball back if they come up with a stop here get the ball back with a minute to go and I want to see Spencer Sanders I want to see if he's going over adjustments what we need to do you know you practice the two minute all the time he's going to not need a field goal he's going to need a touchdown he's he, if he gets the ball back he's going to need a touchdown and it's a drill you work on every day in practice and Mike Gundy prides himself on it so We'll see. It'd be fun to see if the freshman gets his chance. It's up to this play right here. Let's see if they throw the football here, trying to get the first down. Ellinger rolls out, tries to make it with his legs, makes a cut in the clear. Texas, first down, and much more, and that should do it. And a great call by Texas and Tom Herman and Tim Beck. Are they going to run? No, they're not. They're going to either run it with Ellinger or throw it potentially. They take away the pass, which suits Ellinger just fine. He doesn't have to risk the throw, potentially an incompletion and stop the clock. Instead, uses those powerful legs to pick up the game-clinching first down for the Horns, who had to work tonight for this one. He sure did. Ellinger with 29 yards will finish with 70 on the ground. That's seven yards per rush. 281 yards passing four touchdowns had the one interception but the clutch play to not have to put the defense back on the field the folks can stop it just one more time and this will end that streak of five straight home field losses to Oklahoma State they went back to the Colt McCoy era and it'll be the first win for the Longhorn seniors against the Cowboys so here we are Texas a team that has a chance to regroup try to get healthy see where they are before they go to Morgantown and of course they go to Dallas and take on OU. And we'll find out where they are by then. For Oklahoma State, man, keep your head up. This is a good young football team that's going to have a, an interesting run this year with the skill that they have on offense. I tough, love their quarterback. Got a tough K-State team coming up next. But you're right, the electric running and throwing of Sanders kept the Cowboys in the game. But it's Texas, 36-30, and what has become typical of this rivalry, very satisfying for Tom Herman. He's always preaching about the need, the desire, the drive for this program to be elite. That's a very high standard. He calls it the edge. They have to kind of achieve that last three or four percent that separates truly great teams needed to have this win tonight to stay on course. And let's go to Maria. Thanks, Chris. They also needed to convert on third down in the last play. You called your number. So walk me through that final play. Yeah, we had been running wide zone all game. So we we had that in the arsenal and decided to run a play action. He coach said, if, don't throw it unless he's wide open. So he wasn't wide open, so I decided to take off. I knew we needed a first down. And you're still breathing hard from that long run. Uh, walk me through what it's like to finally get a win against Oklahoma State. Remember, it was five in a row that they've come into Austin and walked out with a win. Yeah, obviously an incredible program. They've had extreme success the last couple of years. Um, we knew this team was different. Um, we knew that that we're better than previous years, and we knew if we played our best, we had a chance. And we didn't we didn't necessarily play our best, but we got a win. I have to ask you about the reverse flea flicker when that call comes in from coach. I mean, what goes through your mind? Uh, here we go. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna trust it. I don't know what's going. I'm, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna trust it. All right. Well, obviously, coach, trust you. Congratulations on the win, Sam. Thank you. 351 total offense deeply trusted by everyone in Austin, including the coaches, and he has earned it. Yeah, he has. Such a class act. A, a great football player. Good decisions. 20-28 20 tonight. Four touchdown passes. And I think tonight we saw not just the receivers, but Keontae Ingram healthy. You put those two together, that offense is going to be tough to stop all year in the Big 12. Nice show of respect as the veteran Ellinger congratulated Sanders. He's got a huge future in Stillwater. It was a fun one in Austin. Longhorn snapped the streak against the Cowboys, 36 to 30. Tonight's game produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Derek Mobley. Great to be back with the crew here. We'll see you next Saturday night for Ohio State at Nebraska, 7.30 Eastern here on ABC. Time now for the Ford Wrap-Up Show. And let's kick it to Cassidy Hubbard.